Good evening everyone and welcome to another Shenmue Dojo stream on Saturday. Today we're going to be playing through some Shenmue 2, but before all that I'd like to introduce the co-owner of the Shenmue Dojo, James. So what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to play a bit of Shenmue 2, we're going to play through the end of Hong Kong, get into Kowloon, see how we get on. But not only that, we've got a couple of prizes to give away live on stream. And I'll talk about the instructions of how to enter that later. But one that we've got to give away is a copy of Watch Shenmue right here. It's very, very nice. There's a small small crack at the top of the case, but nothing, nothing major. And we're also going to give away one Shenmue 3 Kickstarter t-shirt, which I'm very badly modelling right now. <laughs> yeah, well... It's, be it's a beautiful top, actually. Yeah, I can, you can see the back a little bit. For every ah. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to just have a nice chill stream. Grab yourself a beer, grab yourself a drink. Strap yourselves in for a... No, 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 no. The one's in my cupboard. <laughs> Pre no, no, it's in the cupboard. Don't worry. Um... So yeah, we're going to crack on with some Shenmue 2. Just looking at the chat, who we've got in. Peter Kenyon Wilson's in. Uh, Sergi's in. KYTRW's in. Uh, TDP903's in. Who else have we got? Um, Bertowski from 88 from Corey Stream. I see a few of you come from Corey Stream straight to us, which is always appreciated. And we were sat in Corey Stream earlier just having having a watch. Try Going it now. Ah. Hello, guys. Can everyone hear me now? That's the joys of Streamlabs. Right, we're going to crack on. So, right. So, <laughs> rewind. So, I, I said hi, guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> How's how everyone doing? doing tonight? Oh, Paddy's just dropped and... in as well to say hello. Hey, up, Paddy. Cartoon. And then I just, I just mentioned to to Spud to do a little twirl for us, just so we could see the back of the shirt. And, He's just, yeah, Paddy. And then I said, oh, you, you heard the reply, but I did say, yeah, uh, is it pre-worn? Is the the prize that we're giving away? No, no, it's definitely not pre-worn. No. The one I'm giving away is in the cupboard. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> Paddy says, I, uh, honestly, I didn't expect to um, kind of give me a shot there when you got a nice shaved head. Do you, I, do you know what, I'd had enough. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm, I've been losing my hair anyway, so I decided to get rid of the bloody thing. Why not? Is that the lock, lockdown cut? It's the permanent lockdown cut. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I quite like it actually. Yeah, it looks alright, mate. It does suit. To be fair. It just gave me a bit of a shot because I've never seen you like that before. I should have warned you pre stream actually. For those like in the chat, James is through Discord, but you can't see me through Discord. Streamlabs has my camera. So I forgot to tell him. Mm. Yeah, so for the last 15 minutes. It I like couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My visual rep representation of Spud was <laughs> one of hairy person. Hello everyone, by the way. Cheers, Paddy. Nice to see you all. How you doing? AM2 podcast on yeah. YouTube. Hi, hey, Abdullah. Nice to see you again. That's Andrew. Welcome, mate. Oh, excellent. Shemu One Official on YouTube as well. Oh, excellent. Great videos from Shemu One Official. Really good. Um, Theory video things and um, real life location things that is uh, you know based on Shemu locations. Some good interesting information there. Check out Shemu unofficial YouTube. He's in the chat on YouTube. Well, I can see it actually. Did crop up. Had you got a few levels in the hard nuts, guys. Get me a few tattoos now on my arms. I reckon. Get a big blue spider on your head, man. <laughs> yeah, why not? The ultimate cosplay. You've picked a good part of the game to play, by the way. I have to confess, I downloaded this save because I was looking at mine, I was like, oh, I'm not sure where we've got. I thought, you know, I wanted something like this because it's all action packed. And it also gives us an opportunity mm. to play some mini games as well before we leave Hong Kong. It's funny, I don't know if anyone saw the uh, Corey Marshall stream last night, I suppose, for American people. 
it was like early hours in the morning for us. Um, I set my alarm for four o'clock to watch it, four a.m. Because Eric Kelso was part of Corey's stream, and um, it's kind of funny, Spud, that you've probably in a couple of minutes got a save where Ren is, and Corey apparently played all day to get to um, <laughs> the introduction of Ren. And he still didn't get there <laughs> by the end of the stream, really so it was a bit because obviously oh. he, I think he wanted to get to like the handcuffed scene oh, so they could yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. it a little bit. But, yeah. yeah, but he was at, stuck at the um, trying to get 500 Hong Kong dollars. Oh, but still good. Uh, oh, good Rio watch. X is in the house. Hey, man, how you doing? Nice to see. You. Legend himself. <laughs> Some good people in the chat tonight. How we got question? How many for Mitsu copies of what Shenmue was released? Bought one 15 years ago. Remember, it was the only copy on eBay at the time. Sorry, it's a couple of years. I wonder about its rarity. There aren't many about. I don't know how many. I think. See, I think Adam Korolik yeah. said in one of his videos that there's 200, but to be fair, I think there's more than that. Because I've seen more over the years, if that makes sense. Um, there always seems to be one available, but obviously it is expensive. Yeah, go, go for upwards of 100. But maybe there is only 200, I don't know. I'd love one, but they mm. are so expensive. No difference, just orange front cover to the booklet. Mm. Even the back of the booklet's blue, I think, still. It's just the front is orange. It's very nice, though. It's a, sort of one of those nice collector's pieces, if you can get hold of one. Mm -hmm. but yeah, eBay's they're quite expensive. Just noticed your name, actually, Michael. Have you got your Shamu World magazine yet, by the way? If you can hear me. Oh, it's Paris, it's cracked. On the shelf. Yeah. Oh, so you have actually got the Fumitsu. That's cool. Pete Kenyon forgot what Shenmue existed. They're actually, either, like, if you don't win the one tonight, they're not that expensive these days. They're, they're, Five ten pound on eBay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking. Michael got his. He's, oh, he's got it. Oh, bro, cool. I was going to check your tracking. <laughs> if anyone's in the stream tonight, who's got, um, who's ordered a Shemi World but hasn't had it, had it yet, I can like, I'll check your tracking live if you like. We've got Luke yeah, delivered. TV cool. In. Nice to see. You. Again. So you used to Shenmue 3 buttons. It was like a, quite a cool co concept, really, for a demo, wasn't it? What Shenmue was like a complete it's very separate clever. side story. It is very clever, yeah. It is a good representation of the game, like, gives people a good idea of what they can expect from Shenmue. Is there a free battle in there? Or is it just a, a long QTE? I've only ever played it twice. I've got the wrong peer in my head. Whoops. Prototype watching on Hidden Palace. Hmm? Ah, interesting. I didn't know that. Who said that? Uh, Mario on in YouTube. Oh, right. Okay. What's the best way to boot watch on a UK Dreamcast? I used a code breaker disc. So you can download the, the, um, the fast code breaker, just burn them onto a standard CD. Whack that in your Dreamcast, then it'll ask you to change the disc, and away you go. How much money have we actually got? Oh, I've got a shed load of money. Whoa, oh, good. Excellent. And a million tokens. I actually think, Peter Kenyon, um, if you get stuck, Adam carlick has got a small video tutorial on it somewhere. What, for booting Dreamcast games? Yeah, for bo booting imports. So it would cover what Shenmue, of course, as well, which is nice. Get out of my way. Yeah, that's exactly it, Michael. Um, Mikael. Um, it, 
it's uh, what's his name, the um, president of Sega at the time. Yes, yes. Mr. Yukawa. Don't actually know if it's his name, do we? I can't remember. Mr. Yukawa's name. Yes, yeah, so, Peter, if you just. Um, I think you can Google it actually <laughs> these days and just find it for Code Breaker. Mm -hmm. And it should pop up. Some games, aren't they like self-bootable these days as well? It depends what kind of Dreamcast you've got, I think. If you've got like a... Yeah, different models mod are slightly different, aren't they? I, I don't know enough about yeah. it, actually. <clears throat> there's guides out there anyway. I'm sure yeah. you could... Yeah, there's loads of guides out there. Um, right, we're going to burn some money on some lucky hit first. Very, it will let me. Out my way. Now, has everybody Seems seen okay. the Basically, recent post on Phantom Rhythm Stone talking about the hidden... I should really be getting some links. The hidden some links lucky up. hit boards that were discovered by Lemon Hayes and his mod team. Oh, Pretty retro... crazy stuff, really, yeah. <laughs> retro that massive... Oh, it's huge. That massive lucky hit, yeah. Retro it's Godfather's funny. just popped in to say he got his Shenmue World prize. Ooh. Nice to see okay. you again, Retro Godfather. Welcome. Oh, so that was from our last stream, wasn't it? Yeah, good yeah, last well, one, Nice to see you again. Good stuff. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> um, hang on. There you go. It's on what YouTube one? as well. That yes. link. So that's. It's a really cool post, actually, from uh, Switch PhantomRiverstone.com. Very, very in depth about that discovery and the lucky boards. Oh, Richard Carter so basically, just popped in as well. Sorry, James. Nice to see you. It's okay. Hi, hi Richard. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, there's three cut lucky hit boards from the Thunder... Uh, what's that place called? I can't remember the name of it now. I really should. I yeah. can't, actually. Th yeah, thunder something. I can't even find it in there. Thunder... Oh, Thunderhouse, yeah. So Thunderhouse in Kowloon, uh, originally, I don't know why they cut them, but originally there was like three extra lucky hit boards. And so um, Lemon Hayes and uh, Switch here in these posters uh, kind of like modded them back into the game so that you can experience them. And he's got a, a quite a nice video showing, showing them off. Obviously you're all familiar with lucky hit anyway in general. <clears throat> but one of the cool things that they did find was like a massive... Uh, version of a lucky hit board that they've um, I think it was supposed to be at the bottom of Ghost Hall building for some reason I don't know if it's like an yeah, easter egg or just a bit of fun the devs were having um, but they've managed to put that back into the game like modded it back into the game just to experience it and it's really it's quite funny how it just breaks through all the textures and the the environment it's that big and obviously the ball is like the same sort of um, big size so it's got kind of like a, a slow paced weight to it um, so yeah, cool, cool um, stuff. Discoveries there, still finding stuff in those first two Shenmue games. Like after twenty years, is it's bloody isn't stupid, it? isn't it? It's mental. They had all this in there that we haven't come across, and it does beg the question: what else is there? And also with those lucky hit boards, Lemon was saying that you can customize them. So he's going to release them, uh, a step-by-step -step guide how to customize your own lucky hit boards and put them in the game yourself, which is awesome. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Which is in that post as well. Switch has actually got a kind of like how it looks, the file, how the, the game reads the file. It's like just these yellow dots. And I'm assuming essentially you could just make your own. You could just like um, place these yellow dots however you want them and then load that into the game and have your own little lucky hit board. We'll have to get a, get a few dojo ones in, I think. Hmm. I was thinking it would be cool to have like the dojo logo. Yeah. I don't know how that would work though. With the... Obviously, we'd have to find like a good path. I wonder if you could like really make a, a really creative one that's like a, a bit of a maze, so the ball kind of rolls around, sort of like remember those old school labyrinth things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Remember, that? remember that way you had like the um, it was like a, a board that could move, and you could you have to try and get the ball out of the thing. They were hard as well back in the day, I remember that. They were horrible. 
I don't really see stuff like that anymore, do you? Not that I'll go, go out of my way to look for them, but... <laughs> that might be cool, like, if you made a maze and the ball... It's like a mousetrap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just pinging yeah. off everything. <clears throat> Retro Godfather found his name in the mag. Uh, he's going to put a video together showing it off. Ooh, thank you. That would be cool. <clears throat> it was actually a really good video. Uh, I that. think you sent it me, Matt, actually, the other day. Um, oh, this yeah. guy... Was it the sci-fi something? Sci-fi <coughs> sci collective or something? Yeah. Even that was a nice video. That was. It was like he really bigged yeah, up Rio X as well. <laughs> but yeah, if you make a video, man, that'd be really cool, and I'll uh, I'll share it on the the Shemu World Twitter and Shemu Dojo Twitter as well, and well everywhere really. Yeah. It's cool break. to see like people's actual reactions. It's nice, and it's good to see that actually so many people are loving it. Mm. We'll see now. I was a little bit nervous, obviously, because you don't know if some like when you make something yourself, you don't know if it's actually good. <laughs> it's weird. Like I look at it from a different perspective, but obviously, people saying that it's good it gives you a bit of hope, doesn't it, that you've done something good. <laughs> Well, I think the proof's in the pudding, to be fair. And you're having a nice break from it now, aren't you? <laughs> After all the shipping and well, everything we say, else. We say, yeah, we say break. I'm, it's a break from the mag, but there's still so much other stuff that we are just constantly doing. It's crazy, isn't it, really? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, we, just no, no time ever. We did our podcast last weekend, which has just come out. Yeah, so I was editing that for like six hours over the course of a couple of nights. So that's out. And then I'm trying to do the YouTube version of that podcast now, which will be really cool once I've done it. Because um, <clears throat> if anyone doesn't know, the, the the third episode of the podcast, the Shemu Dojo show that we've just done, uh, we discussed uh, Bailu Village. So like the complete overview, we followed um, a walkthrough, like an online walkthrough, going through Bailu Village's story. And just some really good discussion, actually, Matt. I've listened to it yeah. back, and it's actually... if, if I, I enjoyed listening to it, and I was part of it. Do you know what I mean? So um, I think we did some good discussion for that episode, and um, I'm going to try and... Uh, for the YouTube version, I'm going to put all the cutscenes that relate to what we were talking about. So it might be quite a nice little watch, to be honest, in general. Sort of like a Shenmue 3 the movie. <laughs> just piece it all together. I was I was thinking, you know, I wouldn't mind trying to create Shamu through the movie, because there's uh, obviously we've got Shamu one the movie, Shamu two the movie that um, a couple of people have done over the years. Uh, Mister three five seven did like a, but it was like a two and a half hour cut, wasn't it, or or like yeah. a four and a half hour cut or something. If I would like to try and. I don't know how hard it would be to condense it, but I'd, I'd quite quite like to do Shemu 2 the movie as like an hour and a half, like a proper movie length, because I think four and a half is a little bit too it, demanding it? <laughs> of a watch, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and I think you could, to be honest, I think you could cut out a lot of stuff and just get a good flowing narrative. Um, obviously, they're going to try and do that sort of stuff in the anime as well, aren't they? Yeah, that would be interesting with the anime That's as well. What was it? Abdul is saying, any more plans uh, to get more issue one for those who couldn't originally back? Um, to be fair, I've got spares of issue one. So if you do, anyone in the chat listening that haven't got issue one of the Shemu World magazine, if you want to message me, you can message me and we'll try and work something out. I've got quite a few spares left because I was... I got more produced just in case we had some mess ups, you know, along the way, or uh, magazines get lost, which could still happen. I don't know how many of are still left to be received, but there is a few that I'm monitoring, especially like Australia and America, that haven't had any tracking updates for about 12 days, which is worrying. But I think there is just some delays with shipping, um, so I am keeping a close eye on them. Um, but other than that, we should have a few spares remaining. Yeah. So yeah, Abdullah, um, message me on um, pe best place is Twitter. To be honest, at Skill Gym on Twitter. Um, I think you follow me anyway, don't you, Abdullah? 
Make sure you Suzuki receives one. <laughs> <laughs> we have sent a it's couple. A good... I was say, we sent a couple out. Yeah, to be fair. Brian uh, Payton's the... got one. Cedric's got one. Brian Payton's got one. Cedric's got one. To be fair, I don't know. I don't know if I was keeping it a secret or not, but Yu Suzuki has got one. <laughs> By the way, now. Excellent. Um, did, did so, he, any comments on it? Or? Um, I'm gonna. I'll tell you after the stream some stuff. Ah. It's. Um, I don't want to reveal too much, but he did like it. Excellent. He liked um, the stickers. You know the. Oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, Rio X yeah. To be fair, man, it's crazy. Um, obviously, Ryuji's got one. You should be freaking out more about Ryuji having one because obviously he's going to really judge your music. <laughs> <laughs> Putting some pressure the music on now. Composer. Aren't yeah. He's really exactly. judge your music now. <laughs> he did say he want to. Tr he, he, he did a tweet the other day, but it was in Japanese. But I did notice it. He said um, he hasn't had time to read it, but he, he, he really wants to read through Shamu World. He said something like that. Yeah, I saw um, that. I think he was doing some recording mm -hmm. or something, wasn't he? Some sort of job he was on, yeah. So that'll be interesting to get his feedback on. Um, I assume he's opened it by now. I mean, I'm, he showed off screenshots of um, photographs of it open. Ooh, almost lost that. Oh, you. <laughs> just reading React, sorry. No, I just see it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, How many famous people have it now then? You've got Cedric Ryan, Ryuji, Yu Suzuki. Did I send anyone else? Um, Ed Lomas. Oh, Eric Cos. Oh, er Eric Ed Cos. Lomas. Yeah. Eric's got 20. <laughs> uh, Corey's got one, on the way at least. Corey's got one, yeah. I didn't even have to send that, someone else bought that one for Corey. Oh, thanks, Abdullah. I did see you, you popped up. That you were following me. So, yeah, just drop me a. I'm going, do I have to follow you back? For you to message me? I'll do it anyway. Oh, he's trashed it. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll see you messaged, no problem. I'll, um, I'll reply after the stream if that's okay. <clears throat> yeah, Richard, he. Uh, I believe he liked it anyway. I don't know about love, <laughs> but he liked it and he liked the stickers. Um, just got some funny things that I'm going to tell Matt at the end of the thing that he said. Um, but yeah, yeah, Retro Godfather, yeah, I'm chuffed a bit, man. <laughs> I was worried that, that we'd get like a, a Sega takedown and I'd get like a cease and desist and all this sort of stuff and Yu Suzuki would be trying to sue me for. <laughs> Everyone's really um, accepting, so I'm really pleased with how it's gone. I, I mean, I think as a Kickstarter, and Chat can mm. also sort of chip in on this, you can't ask for a better Kickstarter than the way that it was run. Ran to time, job done, oh, lots of good communication, got, yeah, spot on. Yeah, thanks, Mum. I tried my best. I, d I still need to put out an update though. I haven't done one for a while. Just always something else has cropped up. Like at the moment, I want to I want to get the YouTube podcast out first because we talk talk about stuff that happened last week. So I don't want to like leave it too much longer, to be honest. So that's going to take up my my weekend mainly. And then after that, welcome. Well, hello there. Good name. Oh, thanks for the host as well. Excited QT. I need Jim to run the Send Me Four Kickstarter. There you go, Jim. That's your next job. What's that? You can run the <laughs> oh, Send Me nice Four Kickstarter. Yeah. Why not? Can you see a Kickstarter happening for Send Me Four? No. no. I don't think it's going to happen. But I'd, I'd be more than up. welcome to <laughs> to run it for them. Just throw your uh, throw the CV at them. I'll have to set up a business called Awesome Gym. <laughs> oh dear. 
So hopefully like a Reader's Digest knew where she wants a quarter. I, don't, I can't do a quarter. <laughs> I originally said bloody uh, one every six months, which... Yeah, you did. Oh. I can't do that now. Um, not how long it's taken to like get it manufactured and shipped. That took like three months, so... It's going to have to be once a year, unfortunately. But... It's going to run for a while then, basically. Sorry. Which is good news. Take us through... Mm. Um... They take us through Shenmue 4 and possibly Shenmue 5. There you go. Exactly. And then there's good content there for the future. Oh, cheers, John. He said, cool stream. I should be reading the messages out rather than just replying. <clears throat> Especially um, while you're focused on QTE uh -huh. site. I should... I should... QTE. I should say, I'm nowhere near as good at these mini games as I am Wacky Model Shenmue 3. I promise I'll stop playing mini games and talk to the chat in a minute. <clears throat> Abdullah, the team of Shenmue World needs to do Shenmue 4, Shenmue 4 Kickstarter. <laughs> do it on top of our full time jobs, why not? <laughs> Does the sh does Shemu three bring the saga to an end, or is there an opening ending? Uh, I assume. Oh, you haven't played it yet. Okay, I was going to say I assume you haven't played it, but spoilers. Although you, you have asked, but obviously it does have an open ending because it was never meant to end the saga. Is um, Yusuzuki's like quoted to say that he needs probably around five or six games to uh, actually finish the story. I don't know if that's changed or that's still his plan. But obviously, that's why we're um, <clears throat> we're back in for let's get Shemu four basically every fourth month. And get Shemu four next, which is a reality already. Really, the the you know we've we've talked about it before, Matt. But in your Cedric interview, they've uh, they're starting to pitch Shemu ah. four. Yeah, it's been, to publishers or developers or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's that it exists in some form. We don't quite know what that form is, but what it's either been pitched or is being pitched to publishers as we speak. I mean, COVID's obviously taken a hit onto that. I mean, in, in my interview, Cedric was saying that he hadn't seen uh, Yusan in, in nearly a year at that point. So you've got to consider that's quite a long time. And when you you, know, you want to be planning pictures, you want to meet up with people because obviously you want that personal touch to these sorts of things as well. It's gonna it's gonna have an yeah. impact. Whatever happens, it's impacted everybody. And of course, yeah, we we just want to come out the other end of it. And the pandemic you mm. know, transcends the game. Of course, it does. But the sooner we get shown before, <clears throat> the better. Yeah, I reckon it's really pushed most game projects out of a year. Just a lot of stuff out of a year in general, really. Because obviously, yeah. when it first hit, we, we were all we didn't really know what was happening, or no one really knew. You know, go back this time last year, didn't have a clue what the virus was actually going to do to people. Um, hence all like the the lockdowns and the isolation and stuff. So. Yeah. So we we, we just um, we just need to wait. The wait. Uh, Rio X, does anyone fancy some free Shenwave codes? Everybody needs to be saying yes in the chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because you're Which uh, Shen Wave are you giving away, man? You're missing out if you don't get yourself one, believe me. Obviously, if anyone doesn't know, Rio X in the chat there, he makes retro 80s synth wave Shemu remixes. Amongst other things, he's got like um, Zelda, um, Final Fantasy, and stuff like that, I think. Um. On Bandcamp, and he's got like six Shenwave EPs, like usually like four, four or five songs each, and a couple of extra little EPs. He's done like um, Neo Yux, uh, Yukoska, and just a couple of other little Shenmue um, synthwave projects he's got. And obviously, I don't know if I got one to hand, but. Shen Wave Volume 1 Collection 1 
<laughs> it came with Shemi World. If anyone got that. Which comprised Shenwave 1, Shenwave 2, and a smaller EP of two songs, I think. Oh, Which might have just been called Shenmue. A couple of questions in the chat. What's the earliest you guys can imagine Shenmue 4 being released? Uh, I can't imagine or see anything coming in 2026. I don't think it'd be 2026. that long. 2026. Yeah, that seems too long to me. I think because they've got the engine and they've got all like assets and mechanics available to them game now because obviously that to to make the game from the ground up because they've been never given any original source codes or anything like that so they, re they just remade the games basically from the ground up the engine for Shenmue 3 I just think because of that I don't think Shenmue 4 will take as long to make it's just improving on what they've got in some respects isn't it in terms of the systems in the game I mean the fighting engine I know we talked about as a bit of refinement there's a solid system there if they just tighten things up, really sort of go to that character, that character development, the story development, I think we'd have, you know, we've got a really good game there. Shenmue 4 can be what Shenmue 2 is to Shenmue 1, in my opinion. Because Renner's just popped into the chat as well, welcome. Welcome on. So just going back, because obviously we missed a few messages here, I love the game, I think it was originally planned to be 11 or 13 games, that was from Super Sailor Moon R. Um, I think I Originally, it was meant to be 16 chapters, and then he whittled that down to 11 chapters, which doesn't necessarily mean 11 games, though, because um, Shemi 1 is chapter 1. We never really get this right, do we? I think he has explained it a couple of times, but even Yu Suzuki's had it mixed up a couple of times. But from... Well, we originally thought Shemi 2 was chapter 3, 4, and 5, I think, because they skipped chapter 2, which was the boat chapter. Mm. Because it said that in the the side quest comic thing for Shemu 2. But then obviously because eighteen years have passed after, and he's he's rearranged the thing, he's not having a skip chapter, I don't think. So I think Shemu 2 was actually chapter two, three and four perhaps. And from my personal the way I, I think that they combined the Guilin section and the start of Shenmue 3's Bailu Village, I, I would think that's one chapter, but I'm not 100%. Just because we've got these chapters that are like, you know, Yukosuka is one, Hong Kong's one, Kowloon's one, Guilin's one, and Bailu Village is still Guilin. Uh, I don't know if you'd agree with that, Spud, but that that's could be how it's going. So Shenmue 3 could, could potentially be four chapters and then Niawu is like maybe part of five or it could be five I don't know just doesn't not much really happens in Niawu for me to say that it's a whole chapter but I don't know and yeah like Peter Peter Canyon says their personal opinions show me two it's two three four just because of the number headings in the journal so yeah that's kind of what I said um only I'm just not sure if Bailu Village is still half of Chapter 4, I don't know, what would you say? I, I would say it probably is, because I think originally it was planned to be one whole chapter, in my, in my honest opinion. So it would make sense that it was sort of the other half of it. Oh, just so everybody is aware, Rio X has dropped some codes in the chat, claim them, and if uh, once they're gone, they're gone. So Shemu 3 takes him up to 50% of the story, yeah, I think, yeah. actually. Did he say 40%? Was, I think 40 was the number brandished about a while back, but I could be making that up. So if you go off that basis anyway, say we are on chapter 5, that does kind of work out, doesn't it? That makes sense if we're halfway through and he's whittled it down to 11 chapters. Sort of like, we've either done chapter 5 or we're still in chapter 5. Oh, Ooh, Battle pick Pika. Got my issue with Shemmy World in yesterday, amazing work, guys. Thanks very much, man. Fantastic. Glad it arrived safely and you're enjoying it. Uh, let me go back up because we missed another stuff. Uh, so, yeah, grab those Rio X codes ASAP for some Shin Wave goodness. Can't wait decades anymore. I don't think we will wait decades anymore, I think, because obviously we've got the anime coming, which is going to be over the next year or two. 
because they originally scheduled the anime to release towards the end of this year, right, man? I don't know if obviously COVID and stuff's pushed that, but I mean, that's going to happen. They are still working on it. I mean, you've seen a couple of episodes without, without voices and seem to like it. They were hiring a cut director or animator a few weeks ago as well. If I, it was over on Twitter, they were advertising for it. I think they, I think they actually got somebody. So they're clearly working on it. So we just have yeah, to see exactly. what comes of it. Fingers crossed for this year because it's it's well. Hard. Oh, and Jason DeMarco on Twitter made a comment saying he's seen a recent version of it and he said he liked it. So, and he's he's, he's seen two episodes, Auntie. Yeah, and he's the he's the, the head of Toonami in America. Mm -hmm. So he's sort of semi-responsible for getting it off the ground in the first place. So that's exciting anyway, and obviously that will lead into Shenmue 4, hopefully. And especially if they can secure like some sort of deal for Shenmue 4. Yeah. You know, because you've got to think, if they're pitching the game, they've started work on the game, it looks better, from what we've told, than Shenmue 3 did. So if they're pitching that to a company, I don't know it's going to be cut media again or whatever, but someone like that, that may be willing to invest in Shenmue 4 and then they know that an anime could potentially be you know it's, it's kind of a gamble in a sense the anime could propel the series or it could make no difference but in my opinion I think it will propel the series because it's going to be on some major networks there like Crunchyroll and Toonami or whatever and Adult Swim I think more people are going to be introduced to the series through the anime and then obviously then they'll play the games and hopefully they'll have the same sort of um, desire for a new game like we will and I think that might be a good investment then going from that point onwards if they invest in the series this publisher uh, because of the anime you know is that that's a good you know you've, you've, you've got some good backing behind a project being successful then really if you think of it like that um, so Tobias says it was supposed to be like five or six. Oh no, sorry, it was supposed to be like five games, but yeah, sixteen chapters. I think I don't remember for sure. Mm. Uh, I'm just going for the Twitch chat. Oh. Abdullah says, "How how old is Yu Suzuki anyway?" Sixty something, isn't he? Yu Suzuki. I bet I'll say on Wikipedia that well. I bet. Yeah, I think he's Born 1958. Oh yeah, age 62. <laughs> Good guess. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know when people retire in Japan, they seem to work forever, don't they? But I think Shemu is his like magna opus kind of thing, so I don't think he's going to retire until he's finished the series. So, hopefully, they can like crank the games out, you know, even three or four years. If he's only doing five, probably, you know, you're talking within 10 years, it should be done. You'd, you'd, you'd have thought could be his goal before he's 70, I don't know. <laughs> um, um, would like to see uh, the Yakuza Studio help out with the Dragon Engine. Yakuza 6 and 7 are both incredible. I'm actually playing Yakuza 7 at the moment um, on my PS5 and I'm enjoying it so far. I'm getting used to the battle system, but be interesting. Mm. I'd like to say you're going to help out with it. I think, yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Just a little bit of help in general. Even if they just sent them, like, some experienced Unreal 4 developers or whatever he's planning on using. Or give them some bloody source code would have been nice. That's true as well, yeah. The virtual fighter engine would have been nice, eh? <laughs> I won't go off on one too much. Are we doing any more segments on Radio Sega? Um, Maybe. we haven't been asked we'll actually. See what comes of it. But, I mean, we're asked, we're doing, won't we? Yeah. More than happy. Definitely. Had, they're a great bunch of Radio Sega, actually. They've been nothing but welcoming for us. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I didn't think Yakuza would be that good. I needed playing 0 to 5 in a month. What a series, but Shimmer will be one. Yeah. I, I, 7 is the only one I haven't played, actually, Yakuza. I completed the. The mainline games, not to six, and uh, yeah, it doesn't really compare to Shamu, but it's still good games, enjoyable games. Let me go through some of the YouTube chat we've missed now. Mm. It's fine. Yeah, it's not easy to share source code. Yeah, I can see your point. It's just been nice if they'd had some of the reference material for it. 
Do I think that could have sped things up a bit? Um, but yeah. Uh, sorry, this is from a while ago, but Michael said, judging from used trips to China, can we assume that the next installment is his priority? Um, I assume so. We, we don't know why, why his neck could have all sorts of sort of um, things going on. I mean, there was that rumour that was disproven that um, they had something going on with Google for Stadia, but that obviously was that was proven not to be true. But we don't know who else they're working with and what other projects they might have going on. So they could... I mean, at the end of the day, they've got to keep the lights on at the studio somehow, haven't they? And they are a studio, really. Otherwise, you know, it's not like they're specifically working on Shemu games. And to be fair, I don't actually know what... What did uh, YSNet do before Shemu 3? They did... did was they it make... that Shemu City or Shemu Guy, whatever it was, that mobile game... Yeah, but have they done anything that isn't Shamu? Mm. I they had that um the, that VR versus game that I think's been shelved. Right, so that was that, that team still. Yeah, I think it was that team. Mm. He was heavily absorbed by this mobile game of the Olympics recently. <laughs> oh, okay, what well, was that? I haven't I, I, I haven't seen it to be fair. Would love to have seen Baisha, Richard said, yeah. which I agree with. Uh, hopefully, they still go to Baisha. I did say, I don't know if it was in, was it the Kickstarter podcast we were talking about? I did say that it would be cool. I, f I still feel like Yu Suzuki cares enough about that location to want to do something with it, and they've, they've already started development on Baisha because we saw the the Tulo things mm. in development. We did. Uh, early and obviously, there's. there's Exactly. And these those photos where he's actually stood outside of Tulo and I just feel like uh, when you look through the Kickstarter page for Shemu 3, the main emphasis was on Baisha really. It was the first thing I think, you know, when it that, that video where it was like the stretch goals and it came up with the three locations. I think Baisha was like the first one and a lot of the first stretch goals are for Baisha. So it was like heavily um you know, it was like the, the place that he was really planning on fleshing out, really, by the looks of it. Or, you know, it was the main focus of Shenmue 3, and obviously he'd run out of time, so they had to scrap it. But hopefully, because he cared that much about it, he hasn't skipped it completely, because that would... And we, we were saying this on, on our podcast episode as well. We'd like them to go back to sort of the ending of Shenmue 3, just as a recap. Sort of flesh yeah, those conversations I... out on the boat. And, and really set the scene for, for Shenmue 4, really sort of get everybody up to speed. And I mean, if the anime is taken off at that point and it's at the same point, that's then the ideal opportunity just for everybody to come in at that point, isn't it? Hmm, I agree, man. Like, this is spoilers, obviously, but at the end of Shenmue 3, it just it, it felt weird how Rio was having that conversation, which was like badly translated as well. It didn't really make sense mm. the, when he said, that's, you know, that's the that's where we found the scroll, you know. <laughs> but he, he, obviously, he meant the cliff temple was depicted on the scroll is kind of what he meant. Yeah. You know that yeah. that 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 was what was on the scroll. He probably meant to say. Um. So that's where they're heading. But the transition was just like so abrupt. I just feel like to start Shenmue Four, and for them to be already like halfway across the Great Wall or whatever area that is, I just think that's. I think they should bring it back mm. to that boat where he was talking to Shenfar's father and just um and then go on the journey. Do you know what I mean? Like Shenmue to me is the you, you go on the journey, it doesn't just skip to some location. You know, even at the end of Shenmue one, Rio gets on the the ship and the next time you see him, he's coming off the ship. You know, at the end of Hong Kong he gets on a boat a uh, buzz the which you're doing now. He arrives in Kowloon, so you've, you've seen the travel uh, at the end of Kowloon. He gets on a boat, you see the boat come in at, um, you know, Guilin. He walks for, for two and a half hours in game, which is like two days worth of real time walking to get to Bailey Village. We get on a boat to Niawu, you know, it, it shows you that those sequences, and then at the end of Shemu 3, you know. It's like that. He's halfway across the wall. It's like it's just, just there, out of isn't he? character, really. From yeah, exactly. So I hope 
that Shemu 4 starts back and you know it, it, it just it, it just it feels more natural I, w I would I would think if they uh, if they, they really showed that if you know what I mean it feeds in as well to what Cedric said um, it's probably about a year ago now in fact when he did a Q&A saying the ending for Shenry 3 was changed a little bit um, I don't know what from but obviously it's changed the ending we got but that's what feeds it possibly feeds into that point you're saying about the travel maybe they lost that as well when we don't know i'm, I'm guessing here there was a bit what i don't know what where we got it from but there was a bit where we were i don't know if he, he had an interview or it was just translated where it sounded like they were going to have the whole journey from bailu village to the hour i think as a sequence and we were kind of getting excited is this like the 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 missing boat chapter again but he's redoing it for this yes, little segment where yes, he gets on boat that. you remember that yeah I remember and, it. and I, I was thinking that'd be cool if he just stood on the boat and the boat the boat's traveling and you can look out the window and obviously it, it, it didn't even need to be anything it could just be repeated textures but it would uh, give you the the sensation of traveling I just thought that would have been pretty cool. I, I don't know where we had that from, but I feel like that was talk that that was going to happen, and then I was a bit surprised that I didn't. I there was an early Kickstarter update when they were showing the boat, and I think I don't know if there was a scene that they, a video that they showed, or it was just a screenshot of the boat, but it was in. It looked like it was around sort of Bailey Village, Wheeling, sort of coming through the forest, wasn't it? So that yeah. that was there. They were obviously thinking about it. So we, it yeah. probably, probably was yeah. cut, unfortunately. It would have been nice because it's part of the, it's, like you're saying, it's part of the Shenmue experience. You're going on a journey, you want to experience that travel with Rio as you as we mm. carry on. And it's a shame it was cut. I, mean, I do I wonder if, like, they just, they just cut because they ran out of time and possibly, yeah. Uh, usually things, things are like half finished, so they just force the end of the game, kind of. So uh, I'm missing loads of comments. Let's try and catch up. So. Uh, Shamu 2, this is from Retro Godfather on YouTube. Shamu 2 is my favourite game of all time, and so if Shamu 4 is anywhere near to Shamu 2 in scope and story content, I'd be over the moon. Davison Carvalho says, Love to see this game being played. Profound emotions. Uh, Renner says, How would you like Shamu 4 to start? We kind of just touched upon that. Uh... Oh, and then he said, I want Shamu 4 to start out with a big fight at the start. I'd rather would do that though. Like, what? What would be the the motive behind a fight? Maybe they at they, that point they're getting caught on the wall, possibly. And it could also it could double up as a tutorial to the fighting engine, possibly. Mm, not a bad idea, actually. Like some black suits, cheer yeah, men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would work quite nicely. You'd have to like, have an extended cutscene, I think, to get to that point to put the context in for it. But then I, I could yeah. see I could see it working. I definitely see it working. Mm -hmm. uh, Retrogarth, obviously we talked about this ages ago, but he says, I agree the enemy is a great way to get the Shenmue name out there to a wider audience. Great idea. Great. Uh, oh, and then he says, fight outside the cave, Runner said. The cave. I don't know. <laughs> We're getting back in time a bit. Peter shrunk his... Um... <laughs> Any news on the limited <laughs> run uh, complete edition? I assume... <sighs> It'll be, I, I've i seen a date of April 30th being brandished about, but I don't know if that's when it ships or when they're getting it. No idea. Let's have a look. I'll have a look on the website ah, quickly. Because we sometimes they usually do say, like, uh, limited run. Um, so Richard said, I hope they do end up using Baisha because it was oozing with exploration. Yeah, I agree, man. And just some of the stuff they were touting in that Kickstarter, you know, like the um, kind of felt like some sort of war thing that was going to go down. Um, I think we talked about it in the, in the, the Kickstarter podcast as well, Matt, but I was um, saying that we, we had heard that they were like going to do some sort of horseback riding and um, mm, infiltration. Word, that, that, that was the word, like infiltration. <clears throat> And obviously, you've got that artwork where he's looking over the the kind of like the canyon, looking through some binoculars, so they're like plotting, plotting this infiltration. 
Um, so some of that stuff would have been cool, and that was where the character's perspective was supposed to come in, where you could play as Shenfar and, and Ren. Obviously that was scrapped in the end. Um, it's really sad that Sega holds the IP for Virtual Fighter System, which, correct me if I'm wrong, was mostly designed by you. Yeah, exactly. It is a shame that, because they, if they'd have brought that Virtual Fighter System, because they could have... I don't know how how big of a part you, Suzuki, played in Virtual Fighter 5, but imagine bringing the, use, the Virtual Fighter 5 engine to Shenmue 3. That would have been crazy. <clears throat> I, I might be wrong, but I know they were talking about there might be possible conversion issues for it as well. But I could be right. making that up. I'm sure, I read that. What like un that's Unreal Four idea. engine? Really? And then, if someone was mentioning the scroll, actually, there's a post on the Dojo forum about the scroll. That actually, it pops up in the Shenmue Online trailer. And the scroll in Shenmue 3 is the same one that was in the Shenmue Online trailer back in 2006. So it's, that's interesting. It's consistent with these, which is great. So the Cliff Temple's been known about for quite a while. Yeah, that's cool. Um, sorry, uh, sorry, I was just saying, got the limited run. It says quarter two. So, I mean, that's very. That's, that's April like, onwards, isn't it? Yeah, so that could go up to July, really, couldn't it? Quarter two. So anywhere between April and July for that limited run box set. And they have been known to delay stuff anyway, to be honest. Munshi Kun on, on chat. Uh, why do you think the story of Shenmue 3 was poor? I mean, it doesn't, yeah, you're right, it doesn't advance it as much as I'd have liked. I mean, I'll put, try and put it sort of as briefly as I can, because this is a podcast on its own with, with Ryan, actually. We talk, Ryan Payton and I talk about this with him, and he was saying that when they developed Shenmue 3, they had none of the source code for the original games. So they spent around 70% of their time building the systems for the game before they even considered the story. And then you've got to build a story, you've got to animate it, you've got to voice it and everything else. And I just think they, quite frankly, probably ran out of time. And also he made a point, mm. Rio's main story, in terms of his story arc, is fleshed out all the way through the games, all the way through the chapters. We know what's going to happen with Rio. Well, he does, we don't. Um, so I don't know if I'm jealous of him or not, actually. I'd probably like to find out through games. But what he was saying is some of the sort of character development stuff is um is fleshed out when they make the games so if you're tight for time as well and you've got to write these things when you've got a tight deadline it's always going to suffer bearing in mind budget also has to come into that in terms of you've got to animate cutscenes, you've got to hire writers you've got to voice it there's a lot that's gone on there that I think the stars didn't quite align, and also it, it can be argued, I think, that Shenmue 3 might have been a bit over ambitious, but I would come back and say it's not Shenmue if it's not being ambitious, it's not a Yu Suzuki game if it's not being ambitious, and I would applaud the team for pushing out what they did. It's a, almost mm. a damn miracle that we got a game with two areas, fully open world, fully voiced, a fighting system. And the mini games as well, on the budget they I had. Think, yes, the story I think suffered, you'd... and yes, the character development suffered a little bit. And I'd want that improved for Shenmue 4. But we have a good basis here for a Shenmue 4 because the systems are now here. James, sorry, I was going off. On no, one. exactly. <laughs> no, I I completely agree. I was going to say I don't think Yu Suzuki would have settled for anything less. To be honest, I think. Um, as soon as the Kickstarter got over that two million goal, I think we're just just watching it increase and increase. Obviously, at two million, just who knows what the game would have been, to be honest. But I think because they kind of got to that stage where it was pushing the ten million, I know it only got to about seven million actually in the end. But because it was pushing that ten million million goal, I think you Suzuki just had it in his head. We're going to make that, you know, that fleshed out Shenmue world experience kind of thing and obviously that requires time and extra funding and they, they kind of just ran out of it basically didn't they I, I, I think um, so maybe that's probably that's probably why the story isn't as fleshed out as we would hope but I also I also think and I, th I don't know if we touched upon this before man but I, I don't think the 18 year gap the 18 year hiatus helped because 
we've played Shemu 1 and 2 to death. We've, you know, we know things, or we've made more of a big deal out of things that might not even actually have been a big deal. You know, like Ryo's got that white leaf that he carries into Shemu 3. You know, there's been theories about all these different things, like even going back to Wawa's basement, where he's got like the elixir of eternal life, or whatever the eternal youth thing. We've kind of made like theories about stuff that might not even need an answer to, do you know what I mean? It's, it's just there because it's there, they didn't really think about it as they were designing the games. But because we've had that 18 year gap, we've kind of like made things more important than probably the, the perhaps were. So when you're experiencing Shemu 3 and you're thinking, oh, there's, you know, there's not a great deal of storytelling here, we wanted answers to some stuff, maybe they don't actually have answers to, to provide us because we've, we've made that stuff up in our head. <laughs> If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I see what you're getting at, and I think as well that I don't want to diminish what people are saying about the character development and, and the story development because I think oh, no. there are things that I, I personally didn't expect to see as well. Like in Bailu, I want to see more about a Welsh training there, just as just as an example. But also, we talked about like Zhuing and Zimming. We got nothing about it in in Shenmue Three. Now, were we meant to? I I, I don't know. But they were sort of two sort of story arcs I probably I anticipated to see more of, but I didn't. No, you go, you go. That's, that's still exciting though to me because yeah, yeah, yeah. we've had that before. It was like when you were talking with Huber and he's saying that even after two you full games, me. we've not been able to even punch Landy. Do you know what I mean? These like things that they've held off on, which other games would probably try and squeeze in. That. Shamu like it, it forces you to wait and it, it can reward you in the end for waiting so by the end of Shamu 2 you know you've, you just have a glimpse of Landy again you haven't seen him since the you know the opening cutscene basically I know we've seen him uh heading off on the boat but Rio hasn't actually physically seen him for like two whole games there and that's Landy and that's just seeing him and that's just seeing him fly away and then you don't actually get to fight him until the end of Shamu 3 you know what I mean? So there's, there's like stuff there that held off on. So you know, you could be talking Shemu 4, Shemu 5, before they even reintroduce chewing, zimming, that sort of that story in it. It'll be more rewarding because it's taken so long to get there. It's like, oh my god, that you know, we've we've been wanting to know what's happening there for so long, and it, you know, literally so long. Um, that's kind of what Yu, Yu Suzuki does. He, he, you know, he doesn't force something out for the sake of it. Is, is how I feel, and it's, it's why he, he, in his head, he wants Shemu to span five or six games because he, he doesn't just want to force it out. You know, people had it in their head that Shemu 3 was going to be the end of the saga, like the trilogy. People had this trilogy in their head, but, you know, if it's not ready to be finished, I, I, you know, I was, I, I don't know who I was saying it to the other day, but I was like, we've waited 18 years for Shemu 3. And yet these people now almost demanding that the game be finished. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We've like we've we've been egging Yu Suzuki on and wanting to see the third game and now the third game's here. These people are egging him on to finish it. It doesn't make sense to me. Renners makes a good point actually. How do we know all the stuff in the base walls from Bailu Village? Rio's have visited a lot of places in China. It's very true. We don't know exactly where he's been, do we? It's a good point, yeah. It's the same, to be fair, I would have liked a little bit more in Bailey Village, like you were saying, you know, like um, in Wow's training. I would have liked to have had more lore on the mirrors, because obviously we know uh, Bailey Village and Guilin was like the home of Phantom Riverstone and that sort of stuff, and they never really talked about that. In fact, you know, Shemu 3, the only thing I'm thinking of is um elder years like touching the mirror but i can't even remember what she says you know what i mean i was expecting a bit more lore into the mirrors she asked how, uh, got, how he got the mirror didn't she there wasn't a lot else around it if, I'm, if my memory is correct hmm. um let's go through some of the chats well. yeah sorry guys i'm, I'm completely missing like loads of chat sega should have helped out by providing the original code base of d3t's ported code base it's a no-brainer <laughs> We've discussed that at length. Uh, oh, yeah. So I don't know how long this this was, but Rio X says I agree with James. I think we'll see them in the boat, and we'll possibly play before seeing them in the Chinese world. That ending always gave me the feeling of rushed. Something like, hey, we finished the money, let's close it here. 
Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, that was a while ago, actually. So, yeah, I, d I don't think the story in 3 was poor as such. I just think that the they could have done more with it. Um, whether that was a, a lack of time or a lack of funding or what, but is um, or even a, a, a writer change because if you, if you know from the Kickstarter page, we are expecting to get like one of the original writers back, and then in the credits it was like a different guy. So I don't know what happened there. Um, whether the, the the new writer wasn't as um, storytelling. <laughs> I don't know what the word is. Um, I hope Sega help in bringing. Uh, I hope Sega help. In Shemi 4. Oh, Sorry, these little reply arrow. I hope Sega help in Shemi 4. Prefer Sega than I will publish for Shemi 4. It would be nice. It just depends. It's like it's Sega's a bit weird, aren't they, really, at the moment? It's like what we're seeing with Jet Set Radio game and the Crazy Taxi game. Mm, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Mm. I don't quite understand that, but yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave it there because it's a whole discussion on itself, really. Tony uh, Luang, any news on Shenmue 4? Uh, the, the only news I can say is that um, in an interview that we did with Cedric, um, ooh, should we paying attention to the QTE, um, that it's ready to be pitched to publishers. Whether that's happened or not, we don't know, and it's something we sort of touched on earlier in the stream, but we'll have to, have to see what comes of it. But there is like some Peter, P Peter K. Wilson says there, I love Shenmue 3, it was just a delight to play, be in that world again. The story didn't move on much, sure, but it was just a joy. I, I, I do think that because... I don't know, it's going to sound bad, but because nothing really happened in Shenmue 3, uh, there's still hope for Shenmue 4 in a sense that, you know, they didn't, you know, they didn't kill a character off, they didn't, you know, they didn't ruin really a story point that would really affect the way we feel if Shemi 4 happens and you know they, you know they can get back on track to um, sort of re rekindling that storyline um, I think Shemi 3 was mostly just on rebuilding the engine rebuilding the game rebuilding the worlds uh, to get them to a stage where hopefully like Going into Shemu 4, they can actually start working on the, the story again and develop that a lot more, hopefully, in Shemu 4. And like I say, I don't think they did so much that um, even the lack of story is like damaged where we are in terms of where Rio is located at the moment. I think they did enough in Bailey Village, I think they did enough in Niawu to get us to where we are at the start of Shemu 4. That you know, like you said, you were expecting to see Shuing and Zimming. You know, they haven't actually ruined that yet. No. So there's, there's, there's always, exactly, so there's always like Shemu 4 where they can come back to that sort of stuff and continue the series as, as normal. And, you know, Shemu 3 was kind of that, that fan service uh, continuing the story, but not so much that it's, it's damaged the series, I don't think. As much as people would have you believe, anyway. Yeah, I mean. Some people believe that's it, Shemmy 3's killed off the series. It hasn't. No way. Not a chance. We wouldn't be getting an anime if the series was dead. They wouldn't be and Shemmy 4. Ready. They wouldn't be getting ready to pitch I hope it. I hope, honestly. I hope Shemmy 4 just smashes people out of the park and, you know, the the go back on the words and, you know, Shemmy 3 will just be a nice um, transition into Shemmy 4 then. It's the thing, it's like Shemu 1, like you were saying at the end of Shemu 1, you were like, where's he going, you know, why, why, why is it just ended? <laughs> he's just got on the boat and there's, there's no, you know, where's the story there? You know, it's, he's heading to Hong Kong, but, you know, you, they've left the user, the, the, the player there, with like no knowledge of what's going to happen next kind of thing, which is kind of the same situation here. And Shemu 2 then, you know, smashed out of the park, it, you know, the, all the story, if you think about where we are in terms of story, was in Shenmue 2, so hopefully they can do that with Shenmue 4. Yeah, yeah, because obviously that's where WoW is alleged to have killed um, Zhao Zemin, so we'll see. Stuff like that's exciting, isn't it, when you think about it, the, you know, he's not got to, you know, that, that place that Landy mentions at the very first opening cutscene. <laughs> you know, how, how amazing is that going to be once you get there? 
There's, there's stuff still that's like mind blowing to me. Like, even if he has to to chop and change the story and the chapters and stuff, there's there's still stuff that's obviously integral to to Shemu's plot. Uh, do you think, Michael said, uh, do you think there will be some return of Guizang and his father in the plot? Not sure about Master Chen, but I, I would have thought we'd see Guizang again. Uh, you, you'd have thought. I mean, it, it's weird, isn't it? He's supposed to be... The last we saw of him in Shenmue 1, he was saying, like, he'll catch up to us eventually once his legs healed. But then in Shenmue 3, obviously, the... International phone card thing. It sounds like he's not bothered anymore. <laughs> Did he actually say? Can you remember the you know the phone call in the hour with Guizang? Did he actually say anything about his leg? No, I don't remember. I don't recall anything. I could be making that up. I don't recall it. No, it's something. That I'm pretty sure he doesn't actually. Which. It's quite a key story point, really, is he's just like basically leg pressed a steel girder out of the way, probably tore and absolutely destroyed his quads. I don't know. That if it was got... a football, it would be out <laughs> for a couple of years. So I that or he's got literally the strongest quads known to man. Uh, I remember writing for one of our Polish magazines about gaming the article about Shemu Tile's never ending story, so the fact we left this cave was astonishing enough. It's a miracle, isn't it, really, that Shemu 3 even happened? Oh, awesome. Have you got a link to that? Because it'd be interesting to read it. It's not, not an article I've come across. Yeah, it sounds good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, his legs not mentioned in a sense, yeah. It just sounds quite normal actually, I think, from memory in the conversation. It doesn't sound like, oh, I'm going to ca catch up with you still, Guizang. No, it's general sort of chit-chat almost, isn't it? Uh, lemon Haze. I mean, well, Haze Lemons. Uh, very little disappointed me being completely honest with Shimmer 3, just minor things I got used to from the originals, like camera, etc, which is why I made the mod, it still felt like a Shimmer game. Which is a, a good point from Lennon there. He's got um, a set of mod tools which you can download on the Shimmer Dojo forums, which will actually um, change the Shimmer 3 camera, you know, it's a bit like behind the shoulder. You can get it on, on the per PC version at least, um, to be completely behind Rio like the original games and it does really add to the whole experience that just a simple little camera tweak like that I would recommend downloading that let me see if I can find a link for that. it's interesting actually because in an interview a few years ago Yuzuki talks about how he actually wanted the over-the-shoulder camera for the originals but they couldn't do it due to technical limitations so it's, it's interesting it's weird they did it that was, was, way. The, was, was there a game before Shenmue released that was over the shoulder. No, they were all directly behind, if I remember correctly. Ah. And, mm. But then I think sort of games sort of came out around the 360 era that started doing it a bit more, sort of popularised it, and that tech was then there. Um, just as a side note, um, thanks for the sub, Peter, Peter, Peter Wilson. Much appreciated. Oh, cheers, Peter. I did see that, you know, I didn't. it didn't even click with me. <laughs> cheers for that, man. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Came up in big, yeah. big on my screen. Uh, uh, Resident Evil off? in 2003. There we are. That was, that was PS. Excuse me. That's PS2 era. In I fact. Uh. Right. Yeah. Okay. Gears yeah. Gears of War. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was yeah. that camp. Uh, that style that popularised that. So, like you say, if if you Suzuki had planned that from the get go. I think you can see in the future, you know, you Suzuki. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look at some of his well, ideas. Well, he created the open world game, didn't mm. he, really, for what we know, you know, and Good. all these games that followed it today. And QT easily popularised as well. And... Do a draw for one of these competitions in a minute. I didn't yeah, didn't realise the time. <laughs> and we get, Christ, yeah. I'll get through this section and then we'll. we'll Are you the splitting draw. the yeah. prizes? Yes. Yeah, so there'll be one draw for the watch Shenmue and one draw for the uh, t-shirt. 
stuff. Uh, Guizang is going to rescue Ryo and Ren disguised as a Chiyu men member in Shenmue 4. <laughs> is that fact as it's here, Uh B. Turo Ski 88 says, Thanks for the stream today, fellas. Fun watching other Shemu enthusiasts out there. Gotta head off to work. No problem, man. No Enjoy problem. your for coming. work if you can. <laughs> uh, YouTube, Michael, it would be great to see some talk with Master Chen when Ryo have more knowledge. Wonder about Chen's reaction to Zoo and all the Chime events. Mm, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Renner says when they bring Guizang back into the series, hopefully in Shemu 4, him and Ren will hate each other. That'd be a good uh, character development sort of thing, wouldn't it? Like, I'd be surprised if they Ren didn't, you know. I don't know, it would just work. It works in my head that they would hate each other. Imagine a yeah. generic voicing both of those at the same Mate, time. I was just about to say that. <laughs> you know, he's got his Guizang voice and then the Ren voice. You just imagine him in the studio doing it all in one single take. <laughs> Azuki. <laughs> that was the quality. One thing that came out of the stream, actually, that Corey did with Eric yesterday is, um, I didn't know this, but Eric got engaged. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I had, obviously, I've been speaking to Eric for the magazine and stuff, so I did know this stuff, but. Like, um, wow. Congratulations, yeah. from Eric, if you, if, you're, if you see this from everybody in the community. Congratulations. I didn't realise, because obviously Corey was saying how, um, obviously, obviously when they were younger, recording Shemi 1 and 2 or whatever, they were, Eric was, it sounded like it was a bit of like a, he was always going to be single for the rest of his life kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously changing that now, he's, he's getting engaged. Corey was a bit surprised in that stream to hear that news. Watching Corey's stream, uh, stream this evening, and he was joking around saying he thought um, Eric was promised to him and all this, that, and the other. So right. Eric, Eric's let Corey down, I think. But no, all joking aside, it's like, good. congratulations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it's good. They got a, like a, a really nice brother, brotherly sort of relationship by the sounds of it. And it fits these two perfectly. Rio and Ren, mm. it's so, it's perfect, isn't it? Absolutely Definitely, perfect. it's like the real life representation of him. <laughs> I think Corey does feel like he embodies Rio. Like he's really taken on that role, anti throughout these years, and he is Rio to us, obviously. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd hope Corey gets to do the anime. Actually, and I'd like to see Eric come back to the anime as well. Mm. They were I think you, you want that continuity for some of the main characters. I wouldn't want too much different. Or maybe I'm being picky, but no, I think obviously we've grown up with those voices, mm -hmm. aren't we? And you know, just having a different Ren in Shenmue Three was enough to kick up a bit of a fuss on it. So, and I actually, like you say, anime's got to kind of. Continue the voice actors, <sighs> hopefully. Greg Chun, who did Ren? Greg Chun, yeah. I actually thought he did a good job. He's not a bad voice. He did a good job. Honestly, yeah. I, he wasn't one of the worst ones. To be honest, the worst ones, if we are talking about that kind of stuff, is some of the um, the telephone calls. Like, Gui Zhang was like a completely different voice to me. Yeah. You know, you're expecting to hear Eric. Whereas Ren wasn't actually too far from. You know, its original counterpart. No, Ren. I thought Greg did a good, good job with Ren. Actually, I mean, I, I, no issues whatsoever. Did a very good job. Right, I'm going to quickly. Yeah. When this cutscene is done, I'm going to run the first oh, competition. Right. It will be for the copy of Watch Shenmue. So what you'll have to do, right, guys? This is your chance, man. What you'll have to do is when it comes up, it will pop up in the chat, and you have to put exclamation mark raffle. Yeah in the chat and then it'll oh. give you a ticket and then it's a 10 minute competition so you've got a bit of time and then i will draw the winner once it tells me that shirt, and then i'll do the t-shirt at the end of the stream but I have to use our downstairs toilet because our upstairs one can't be used till tomorrow because it's all been ripped out and finished. Oh, 
How are you starving work on your house, are you? Yeah, we fi got finished yesterday. We had to wait 48 hours to use it. So, ah. so mm. let me kick this competition off first. And then... In the garden, is it? <laughs> We've got a downstairs loo, luckily. <laughs> I think I'd cry if we didn't. Uh, here we go. Start giveaway. I'll just make sure it comes up in the chat for everyone. It may take a few seconds. This is where... There you go. It's in the chat right now. So, exclamation mark raffle to enter. I'm going to be back in two minutes. Will that work on YouTube? Just saying It should go. work on YouTube. If there's any problems, give us a shout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, it looks like it's working. So, YouTubers, if... Uh... Yeah, there you go. Peter Wilson's done it. Exclamation mark raffle. In fact, you're cheating a bit there, aren't you, Peter Wilson? Doing a YouTube entry and a, a Twitch entry. Like it, you're playing the system. So, exclamation mark raffle, guys, if you want to win a copy of What's Shenmue. Um, so, Rio seems super non plaused. Is that the word? Plused? When he sees Ren again in Shenmue 3. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree, actually. I feel like Rio's reactions in Show Me 3 were a bit off. Um, I, obviously, the first time he meets Chai back in Bailu Village, we all, always expected him to um, be a bit shocked by seeing Chai again. Like, as far as Rio knows, he's dead. He kind of elbow assaulted him <laughs> into the ocean at the end of Shemu 1, and you, you kind of expect... A bit of a reaction from Rio for seeing some some guy that he's he's expected to have finished off. I know we had the um, the side quest story in Shemu Two that showed us that Chai was still alive, kind of thing. But then again, I think at the end of that comic, Rio knocks him back into the ocean again. So <laughs> as far as Rio is aware, he's he's defeated Chai. So seeing him in the the Bailey village, I was ex expecting like a really good like you know what. How are you still alive? Kind of thing. Same with Ren. You're expecting him to 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 see Ren and be like, "What you know? What are you doing here?" Kind of thing. He doesn't really give him a reaction that you'd expect. Got a few raffle entries. Ah, brilliant! I can see. Coming up, man. See, people are coming in. I don't know what the probability of winning one is. Let me see. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. If it's working on YouTube, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine entries there, and Peter Wilson's got two because he's 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 gone from YouTube and Twitch. I can <laughs> I can confirm that YouTube is working, by the way. So there are there's nine in there at the moment, and you've got seven minutes to go yet. So you've got plenty of time. Ten. Someone else has just popped in. Zolkan. Well, that's what I've just counted, isn't it? I counted that. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, beautiful. If you're saying there's ten, then YouTube's working. Yeah, yeah perfect. Beautiful. Excellent. Good to see. Yeah, Brenner says we knew Ren was going to follow Rio, though, which is true. We knew that when he threw that knife on the map, he was going to go to Guilin. But Rio didn't know. So, I was still expecting a bit of a reaction from Rio seeing Ren. More so than like, you know, what we got. So it's a bit like, what the fuck you doing here? <laughs> Borny, thanks for the follow. And welcome Borny, to, nice. Well, welcome Two, to uh, three ends. I don't think I've seen your name before, so welcome. Thanks for the follow. I haven't looked at the, the Twitch stats for a while, actually. I don't know how things are going. Fairly busy tonight, actually, which is nice to see everyone on their Saturday evening propping into Sears, which we do appreciate. We've got pe people from all over the world. I've seen someone from America, Pennsylvania was in. Mm -hmm. uh, there's obviously a few from the UK. But I don't know if Paddy's still here or not. Borny, my favourite game. Good all taste right. in game woods. Yeah. So I don't know if you can, you can see this stuff very well, guys, but I've, I have kind of set my room up a bit to 
have a bit of shimmer in the background. So that obviously this is the where's the camera there? This Aye. is the light box that you got with the oh, yeah. Good. collector's edition of Shimmer Three, Wales, yeah. which I assume is Rio uh, Count Count Albo assaulting the. Um, Who is it? Ah. Do we know what his name is? The big guy at the end of. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Begins with a G, don't it? Yeah. Yes. Got... Go on, someone in the chat knows. What's his name? Uh, Begins with a G. Ah, uh, Mr. G, yeah. <laughs> Mr. G, yeah. Cambridge. Begins with a G, it is G. <laughs> Cambridge, Slacky, yeah. Wales, United yeah, States. We've got people in all over, from all over tonight. It's fantastic to see everyone. And thank you for taking the time so, yeah, to watch us. That's, that's a pretty cool item. I think that's that's a, a, a nice Shemu item. And uh, we spoke about it earlier, actually, the limited one, Shemu 3, the, the new one. Oh, it's lovely. It is lovely. Yeah, we've got a uh, Sword of the Seven Stars replica, even though it's it's tiny, but to be fair, that is it's a replica of Shemu 3's Sword of the Seven Stars. Um, and the Chobu Chan figures. So, some really nice stuff coming our way soon. Lots of entries rolling. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's explanation mark raffle. Anyone that's just entered the chat, this is to win a copy of what's Shamu. The Dreamcast. Japanese version. You will need a either a modded Dreamcast, a Japanese Dreamcast, or the boot disc to play it though. You've got approximately three minutes. I just had a very quick look at it. Can you show it off a bit more, man? Yeah. Show them what they're going to win. Oh, there we are. So that's the front. There is a tiny crack in the top left corner of it, but it's nothing major. I mean, it's very well wrapped on the back of it here as well. It. Is it sealed? Did you say? It's sealed up. Yeah, it's not originally sealed, but it's in a nice sort of plastic covering, which is which is nice. Oh, Chow hmm. popped into the chat. How's it going? Hey, Chow. How's it going, man? So, yeah, that's what you can win. Join just in time for the ref. <laughs> Good timing. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, actually, uh, Chow. He's made a few of these cool um, kind of like music box jingle things. Um... Let's see if I can link his channel, because he, he did do a video the other day. He was showing off Shamu World Magazine issue 1. Uh, and he used one of his uh, little jingle things he made, which was really cool. Uh, oh my Christ. For some reason, when I'm doing this stream stuff, my memory just goes. What's his channel's name? <laughs> I think it is just his name there, isn't it? Um, guys in YouTube, just so you do know, you are in the raffle. It just, for whatever reason, doesn't pop up in the chat, but I can confirm it's all there. I just, I am checking it as we go. Now. <laughs> do you remember Peter trying to win win this on stream? Is that what you're going to do? I'm going to have a go. Very quick go. Dog Driving Bus is following us. Thank you. I love that name. I haven't seen your name either in, in, in chat before, so welcome. Fact, I won't do that because that's a bit... This is a nice one. Find Maze Amulet, guys. Check this out. Um, this is a little um, a music box jingle that, that Chow's made in the chat here. You knew. Oh god, ah, man, if no you do this, we're, we're going to be here for 12 hours, aren't we? Oh, Easily 12, 12 hours. hours. <laughs> you knew. Uh, nice to see you. Welcome. Good to see new people coming into <laughs> to our streams. Dog driving bus. That was the guy, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Welcome, man. No, 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 Hello. no, no, no. Yes, 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 yes. Hi, Yanni X. Nice to see you. I haven't seen you for a while, actually, Yanni. How's it going? Hello? Good luck, man. Hey, Wait, which, is, which is the most... I think this is the most live thing, isn't it? The screen you shared with me. Yeah. 
Come on, we're getting it first time. <laughs> I have done it. I have done it's it. Almost, it is. I've never done it live. I've done it myself. I don't think I've done it twice because there's two in there. You can get two moves, but it is. It's it's near impossible. I'll give it a go. Another go, and then we'll carry on with some story. But this is why I was saying like the lemon haze thing with the the lucky hit boards. If they could add a couple of extra winners, <laughs> it would be nice. Yeah, cause this board is pretty easy to be fair. You were there for hours. Yeah. It's the fact. It's the fact that you've got to get through two boards before you do it, though, Antis. It's just a time sink. Oh, the competition for the Watch Shenmue has just closed. So I will draw Ooh, that winner in a eyes. moment. Let me do this. I'll do this board, these boards, and then I will draw it. Go right. Go right. Go right. Go right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Nice one, Just have a look at this last board, Lemon, if you're not familiar with it, man. It's impossible to get the move scroll. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying, let's see, so we've got three on the right there, four, oh, four on the right, three on the left. If you could add, even just another one, probably, mm. would make it a lot more... Right, I'm going to drop it here and just see what happens. Okay, okay. Nah. Oh yeah, I need to try to learn. Oh, yeah, Congratulations, I'm um, so getting into the video game, game business. Just seeing your chat there. What, what are you doing in it? Right, I'm going to give up now before the video I was going to say pull out my hair, but I have no hair, so I can't really do that. Um. Oh, cheers for checking that out, Retro Godfather. That's cool. Kid Omega has just started following us. Nice to see you again. It's another name that I haven't seen before. So, welcome. I, uh, Chow, Chow says, I did get both scrolls, but I had to do a few save scums as I mistakenly waited for the free day before the I had assault to do it. Uh, yeah, that's true. Right, I'm going to draw this raffle out. So... Abdullah Asif has won. Ooh, Abdullah. I feel like didn't Abdullah won, win something from us before? I think he did. <laughs> he wins every stream. I promise <laughs> you it's not rigged. So, Abdullah, you might have to uh, message us on Twitter again. But don't worry, for the new guys in chat, we also have another competition, which is I'm giving away a Shenmue 3 Kickstarter t-shirt in me size medium. Don't worry, it's not the one I'm wearing. <laughs> it's it's um <laughs> it's in my it's in my yeah. cupboard. Congrats, man. Um to be fair, he's he's already messaged me, Auntie, so Yeah, yeah. Just um I'll I'll get your address from you, Abdullah, again. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I swear we've sent him something. I'm sure we did. Was it the, um, and did was we... it the cop media thing? Yes, and I think you've mess you sent a, a um, copy of Shenmue World, or going to, aren't you? Yeah. He keeps winning, I think. And, well, I think he said... What? I might be getting this completely wrong, but I think he said the first time was the first thing he's ever won. It was the cop wrong. media thing. Have you actually had that yet, Adola? I feel like you did. He posted a picture. And he was surprised that he got more stuff than he was expecting. He got like a t-shirt and some other stuff as well, didn't he, from them? Yeah, it was really and, late. And like coming. a Shemu Dojo. It was late. He got like a Shemu Dojo sticker, which was had, had nothing to do with us. It was, it was late coming out, and I think Sylvia at Cock has sort of just gone and um, sort of gone above and beyond actually to, to make sure that she did, every, yeah. everybody's got their Fair prizes. play to Sylvia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cause it was... I know, obviously, they got um, pandemic sort of delays and stuff, but. I think I think because of that you actually won more stuff at Dulla. <laughs> because of the, the delays and stuff, so I think she probably felt a little bit bad. So she sent me like loads of stuff, which is good. Yanni I'm working for you Ubisoft. Ah, oh, okay. Custom support rep, no, nightmare um... position. Whoa. Yeah, seeing um some of the bugs that watchdogs have, for example, I would not want that job. Interestingly enough, I'm gonna plug this now. We have a um we have an interview coming out next Saturday. Yes. Um, with a gentleman called Mike Reinhardt who now works for Ubisoft in their marketing department in America 
but was the lead beta tester for Shenmue 1 on the Dreamcast at Sega of America, and it comes out next Saturday at 9 a.m. 13th. Uh, yeah. Michael, nice to see you. Thanks for dropping in. And hope to see you That's on another this time, time next week then. Yeah, this time next week it will be live for everybody to. Is Charlie leaving? Um, Mikhail was leaving. Just oh, Mikhail. Sorry. Dropping sorry. out. Mikhail, yeah. Gotta go. Yeah, see you later, man. Thanks, Thanks for dropping for by. In. It's been a really most really. of the stream, actually. So. What are we doing? Thank you. Ah, Huang's room. Right, okay. It's horrendous. I can't even remember what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that interview, to be honest, man. Uh, just some good. Uh, I bet he's got some good stories from back in the day. He has actually. He talks about um, sort of testing process, how he got the job at Sega, how he ended up working some of the marketing for Shenmue in the West, meeting Yuzuki, dropping VMUs on his foot. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, okay. he met Yuzuki and went to shake, shake his hand and then threw a load of VMUs at him. I suppose it's, it's not as painful as like Lego though, is it? Yeah, yeah. God, I hate Lego. <laughs> Anyone who's ever stepped on a Lego, Lego, oh, no thank you. Wrong bloody way. says he wishes he could get a job as a game tester. I think that was everyone's dream job growing up. That was like one of my jobs that I wanted to go for, like a, be a game tester. Just seemed surreal getting paid to test a game. <laughs> it's not quite what you crack it up to be though, is it? Because like, you could be t told to like run into the same wall 1,000 times. Mm. And you have to like do reports and stuff, don't you? Like constant uh, writing and these scripts I think you have to follow. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if you've heard Matt's interviews so far, guys, that are in the chat. He's got a whole series of them now. He's, he spoke to Michael Huber, Ryan Payton he's done three parts with, Cedric Biscay, a uh, guy that did Shamu and Dreams, the, the PS, PS4 VR game. He's done Shamu and VR, Bloodhound Town. Andrew Dickinson, Dreamcast Years book. Um... Missing anyone? No, that's it. Mike's the last one to come out. I've got a, I'm, I've got a couple I'm working on that I want, but they're proving, mm -hmm. uh, proving mm -hmm. difficult. But I'll get them. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> um, Michael Huber's agreed to come back when the anime's been shown. He, we're going to talk about that when that's been shown, which is fantastic. The interview with Michael Huber is one of my favourites because we just turned into a 90-minute Shenmue nerd out. We really did. Yeah, it is. It's really good, that is. That's like going through each instalment of the series, and it's cool. Can we get an interview with uh, Suzuki? <laughs> That's the dream. That'd be nice, That's the it? dream. Um, I'd do it. I'd hap happily do it. We'd need a translator. Um, so That's the final episode. <laughs> yeah. When I retire, yeah. Yeah. But you can get all these on any podcast platform as far as i know i mean we've uploaded them to anchor which like distributes them to spotify apple podcasts those sort of things some other things i've never heard of um so if you you check whatever you i don't know if anyone listens to podcasts still but uh just do a search for shemu dojo show and they should pop up and also on youtube yeah you could invite switch to be the translator that's a good idea switch you do just, it. Uh, a podcast with Switch would be nice. Yeah, I mean... He did do one, actually, didn't he, for... Say, Galicious or Lacious? He did, yeah. Which was pretty cool, to be honest. Um, I will... I'm, I'm going to approach certain community groups at some point to get them on the show, because I think... Yeah, just be people who made the game. I think we need to yeah, go out into the community and talk to guys in the community, because we've all got different stories of how we discovered Shenmue. And it's just nice to have those out there and get those mm -hmm. get those stories. Chow makes out a good there. point actually. Um, mentioning Andrew Dickinson, the Year Two Dreamcast book ends tomorrow. Oh yes, we'll plug it, does. it. I don't mind plugging it. I've I've backed it. I think you've backed it as well, Matt. I have. And yes. This this particular book, this Year Two book, is going to actually cover Shenmue. 
because um, Shenmue actually came out in the second year of the Dreamcast life. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting. I think there's there'd probably be a big section I would have thought on Shenmue in this book because I know Andrew is a, a big fan himself. Yeah, hence the podcast with you. He's a big Shenmue fan, which is great. So I can't imagine him having it any other way where it's not like a big part of the book, uh, and that ends tomorrow. So, and I think you can get Year One, to be honest, Peter. I'm pretty sure you can yeah. back both books. See. Yeah, you can. I think the digital copy of Year One is available straight away if you go in and, and sort that out. Mm-hmm. It's well worth read Year One. Oh, he's got it. He just hasn't read it. <laughs> fair play. Oh, he's got it. He's just not read it. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I was pleased with it. To be honest, it was kind of part of the inspiration behind Shemi World, mm. especially the size. I like the. Um, the miniature sized format of it um which is why i like a few people have, have, have mentioned it really like obviously chemi world Fantastic. it's not really a magazine it's kind of it's more like a book size wise um, but obviously my intention was to make a magazine and it's got kind of like that fun magazine style to it it's not like a a book as such where it's like it's definitely not a novel anyway it's 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 just a bit of fun really this it's bright colorful i've um, i've taken inspiration from other magazines to try and design you know it's my first foray into magazine design so that's you know i just had a bit of fun with it really and hopefully that shines through bloody good quality and you can tell and i'm, I'm bigging it up because it's not just because i've obviously got one and sort of seeing things behind the scenes a little bit but it, as a Shenmue fan, why wouldn't you want it? It's a bloody fantastic product. There's so much in there that, like, Maggie, yeah, you've got cartoons, you've got comics, you've got fan features, you've got an interview with Eric Kelso. It's so, you can tell it's been made by a Shenmue fan, and that's the, the biggest compliment you can give it, in my opinion. Mm. And honestly, the, the contrib- contributions from... You know, fan art creators and all that sort of stuff. It's you know, just it, just the front cover alone is what you know really got me excited. Koji's Koji's artwork there. As soon as I saw that, and we went with the um, top notch, top you know, top notch. Ran, ran with the idea. <laughs> I know it was like it was one of the main um, drives really to get the project done. Just having a, a magazine slash book with that as the front cover for me is is pretty cool. Obviously, we did the poster. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Ren, as I hope, I hope Shenmue bring back Goro. I don't mind Goro so much, <laughs> but I can hear Peter in the back of my head sinking. Yeah. And going How would they bring him back, though? Imagine another one of those fan series moments where, obviously, you've got uh, Zhang and whatever in bloody Niawu. Imagine Goro just turning up in, <laughs> Turns up in China in, somewhere. Turns up in like Meng or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, bro! <laughs> he runs down the fucking... Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I can hear Peter Se- in my head. Second, second this. <laughs> second this. Um, strictly say Europe. Shenmue re-releases should have been on Switch. Yes, I agree with you. I, and there were heavy, heavy rumours. E3 2019 that it was going to happen. Um, so much so that we had artwork prepared for it just in case it dropped. Mm, um, that's true, we did. And it never materialised, unfortunately. I don't know why. And actually, I think that the, the install base on the Switch would be ideal for Shenmue. There's... A lot of old school fans on there. I just and the games that are on there. I think it fit in really nicely with the Nintendo Switch. It's just, I don't know why. I, I, whether it's technical limitation. I don't know if um, Lemon Hayes is still in the chat. Whether technically they could do it. He's the man. He would know. And his Dragon and Phoenix project is obviously he's deep delving into the code and everything. I mean, there was, there, was, there was chat recently of, like, why is Shenmue 3 not on Xbox now that the year's passed, that year exclusivity, but 
I, th I think that was more so to do with Epic exclusivity than PlayStation. I think PlayStation have got uh, a longer period. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't actually. know what the, the period is, but Cedric said to me publicly that there was a contract signed with Sony around the exclusivity. Mm. So, it coming to Xbox, and I'm going to burst this bubble right now, is highly unlikely any time soon. I don't know how long the mm. deal is for or anything like that, but I, I, it's not going to happen. It's unlikely to happen, in all honesty. Switch, I, I don't know what the details of the Sony deal were. Maybe it is the only console exclusive to the PlayStation runners consoles if you like but we'll see um i'm assuming that's the way it's gone and obviously you have the epic deal for the year which and the game's now on steam and actually in its first sort of two weeks on steam it's actually among the highest drivers uh, revenue drivers on steam for new releases so mm. did you say it was top, top 14 or am i making that up i think it was top yeah it was in the top 14 revenue drivers so for November for new releases and bearing in mind it came out halfway through the month now I know it was discounted as well but actually that makes it better because it's in yeah, that number true. and it's been discounted so I wonder how many people were actually holding off on Epic for Steam that's madness to me that you wouldn't download Epic to, to play it if you've been waiting that long I wonder how many people actually as soon as it released were like yeah that's Shenmue 3 for me now yeah. and then it was a year later it's I mean, I, I gifted a copy to a friend as well, which is another sale, of course. So I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested to see the, the actual numbers on it. I mean, I, Steam Spy has some numbers. I don't know how accurate it is. Um, so you were saying it was? It would have been 15 <laughs> without you gifting that to yeah, your friend. Yeah, just that one extra copy. <laughs> one extra Peter, copy. Peter, Peter Wilson. I absolutely love Shenmue 3 on Xbox. I would absolutely love it on Xbox, but the thought of catching a thousand fish again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that there. A thousand bloody fish. Mm. I don't oh, know. Wow. Oh, no, I'd do it again. <laughs> Just to have it exposed to more people. It can be on Game Pass then as well, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Certainly one and two was on Game Pass for a while. And it got pulled off. Mm. If that was like back, because obviously the Yakuza games have just kind of released on Game Pass, aren't they? Like, mm. I think three, four, and five. And People I know seem to be going mad over that. And yeah, I think there was a comment in the press that Sega were quite pleased with the performance actually on on Game Pass of the Yakuza games. It's interesting. It's interesting to see. And Sega is still semi-involved in Shenmue Three. Like, it, they'd get a bit of revenue by by bringing it to that sort of platform. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely would. Yeah. Yeah, same era, dollar. Yeah, I'd buy one buy on another. Xbox immediately. Physical of it, yeah. To go with my other copies, knocking around. Yeah, Chow does make a, a point there. If you have an unpatched Switch, you can run GeForce Now or, or Raycast on it using Android OS. I really didn't, didn't know that. I think I have seen some someone playing Shenmue. Uh, they were playing Shenmue one and two, weren't they, on on the Switch? Definitely, I've seen that video. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it, but fair enough. Rumors are for Sony Sony Five is going straight to Game Pass when if it comes to Xbox. I think, to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me with Sega. If that's the way they're going on Xbox now. That they're going mm. on to Game Pass pretty much immediately. I mean, I, you've got the wider issue around Game Pass. I mean, it's very good, it's good value for money for what it is, but I don't know, I'm old school. I like to own my games. I see I see James's shrine of games, and I just look at that and go, I love that. I love owning physical games, but yeah, a, lot of people in the, a lot of people in the industry believe it's going to go that sort of way to almost like the Netflix-style um, subscription model, but then... There's all, in my opinion, there's always a space for a proper comp, old console and a proper game in your hand. I, I love it. I'm interested actually to see like what Sega get from going to Game Pass straight away with with games like obviously Persona 5 is going straight to Game Pass when it comes to Xbox. They're not yeah. even willing to see 
how well it sells that what? is banging it out for free? Like, what kind of... What's the deal with it in know? terms of... How do, how do they get paid, is what I want to know. Are they given, like, a set fee to do it? Like, I don't know. I think a lot of devs are interested in Game Pass because, weirdly, sales get a boost when they go on Game Pass. Hmm. <clears throat> is that because... Is that, I mean, part They get drop, dropped. Is that when they get taken from Game Pass and then it's kind of like, oh, I can't get it anymore, so I'll have to buy it? Or oh, what? What is that mentality? Because good point. For f- for me, go, thinking about Game Pass is like people subscribe to Game Pass and actively using that service. Those are those their their games for that month, or you know, have them in many months that they're they're listed for. I can't imagine them paying for Game Pass and then buying a game. If you know what I mean, I, I feel like people subscribe to Game Pass to only playing Game Pass games. I might, I might just be pulling that. I mean, the way yeah. I, the way I've used it, because I got it for my PC. The way I've used it is exactly that. I look at the games that are on there. I choose the ones I want to have a go at and install, and I just play them through. Nine yeah. times out of ten, they're not necessarily the games that I would buy. Um, but I'm interested to just give them a go, and because it's quite a cheap service, it encourages me to do it. And also, when you consider the Xbox going to have, you've got the new Fable game coming out, you have the new Halo game coming out. Um, we don't know what's obviously happening with the um, Zenimax Corporation, because obviously Microsoft are buying them, so those titles might end up on there. So it's, it's, it's an interesting concept. I, I, don't I suppose know. that's the in, in, you know incentive, though, isn't it, really? If you think, if Persona comes to the Xbox all of a sudden, so they give five away for free. Maybe Sega know that they've got games planned in the Persona series, like Persona 6 or, you know, the Strikers or whatever's coming out, Persona Royale or whatever. They know that when they release them, they can release them physically, digitally. And these people that have played the previous installment on Game Pass for free, who then have the mindset of, like, I'm buying that day one. Because otherwise they wouldn't have ever played that series. It's the same with Shenmue. I guess that is kind of what you want. You want game pass yeah. people to play shemu one and two because you know sega yeah. not really making a huge amount of money from one and two anymore um obviously it's been released for when did it come out 2018 well, or whatever 2018 yeah. yeah so the people that actually wanted to pay for money for the game have done it now so by having it for free it kind of introduces them to the series and but then again, say we aren't really involved now, are they? So it doesn't really that incentive doesn't really pay off in terms of Shenmue. But it, I can see why it would in, in other games like the Yakuza series. They're kind of banking on people playing zero to six or whatever, and then buying seven because seven's the new release. It's not on Game Pass Seven, isn't it? As far as I know. I can't remember if it's on Game Pass. Case Pete Wilson, case in point, is a game called Gun Between, which I bought and loved. Uh, I went. On to buy it in a sale just to have. I never would have known it existed without game. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? With game passes, there's games there you think, oh, I'm not too sure, but I'll give them a go. And I think that's where the appeal. Right, certainly, so, certainly for me, that's where the appeal lies with it. So, Peter, you're saying that you played a game you've never heard of and you would never have played because of Game Pass. You played it, and then because it was dropped from Game Pass, or it might still be on there, but you just want to keep it. You bought it. I get you. Mm. Yeah, I can see the benefits. It's just it's it seems weird to me though that someone would say games that are released on Game Pass get more sales. That doesn't really make sense to me. But I mean, clearly the model works because Microsoft are putting a lot of money and effort into it, aren't they? It's, so there's there's obviously something something going well for it, and it is. I mean, I actually it, it does make sense to me if it's a very unusual game. You know, like a game that people aren't willing to try just on the basis of a name. You know, like The Gardens Between, I've never heard of it. I mean, I played um, Ori and, Ori and Will, um, Will of the Wisps on it, and I loved it. Fucking fantastic game. I never would have touched it had I not had Game Pass. Radio Sega, welcome. It's rather sick, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice he he says he can't hear us, but... Ah, we can, can see us. Thanks. Here you go. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs Thumbs up. Up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put your thumbs up, Max. <laughs> you can't hear us, but... Uh, so YouTube messaged you a little bit. So Chow says, I think Game Pass is definitely a great idea to market the games as people would buy games they like standalone after trying it out. Yeah, I, I do get it. It's just... I suppose when they, they leave Game Pass... If you really enjoy the game, you, you probably would go out your way to buy it. And yeah, as Game Pass games aren't permanent, there is the incentive. Strictly say gear, it says Yakuza just really got my attention last year after I loved Judgment. It's weird seeing like how people are introduced to Yakuza as well, because obviously that's been over ten years series now, since the, the PS2 original Yakuza, and it's just it's interesting seeing people's starting points into these series. It's like taken Judgment off well, took. It? It's taken off more and more than it has the Yakuza series. So it's nice to see. Okay? I mean, Shen, for me, it's Shenmue's cousin. And I'll yeah. quote, that's Michael Huber's quote, and I would agree with him on that. Oh, Yanni X is just. In, in, in fact, <laughs> in fact, Yakuza's like yeah, getting. Um, it's getting everyone really into it. It's getting people that have played Shenmue and want to have that kind of gameplay experience, even, you know, similar sort of style. So people that have played Shenmue are moving to Yakuza. Then there's got people that have obviously been there since the first Yakuza that have carried on playing. And then there's people that have been introduced to Yakuza because of judgment. So Yakuza's actually getting all these bloody different sources of income from different sources. <laughs> Yeah, Whereas, you know, little old Shemu. I suppose Shemu, in a sense, does have that. If people are playing the accuser and then find out that it kind of was, you know, made off the back of Shemu, they'd go back and try Shemu. Mm. I don't know if it works as well that way. Possibly, I think Yakuza is very much, it's very in your face, isn't it? It's very action packed. Ah. Um, but they borrow, I mean, borrows elements from Shenmue and uses, uses them accordingly. It's a different game. But I, you know, both exist quite nicely, I think. It's just more a case of, I think. Um, you need to get it out of your head that, yeah. you know, yeah. people compare it, don't they? Just, you just got to go and take them as two separate. Yeah. Different franchises, different series, they're both different. Completely different, you know. The only thing they share is the first game was set in Japan, <laughs> kind of, and it's open world. And you can play arcade games. I remember the first one on PS2, I picked it up cheap off of eBay actually. And I was hooked on it and I got numbered I got one and two together on PS2 for Yakuza. I remember picking them both up. Because um, they spent a lot of money on the first Yakuza game, because they had some really famous people. I think Mark Hamill does. The, I think he's. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah. Like Majima in, one, in, in number one. He does the dub on the back. There's some really famous people in the first game. And it's taken to Yakuza 7 to get an English dub again. I know Judgment had one, but it's interesting it took that long. Here you go. Have a look. It'd be interesting to find out who. Who dubbed it? I know what you mean. There's some famous people in the first one on the PlayStation. On the PS2. Mark Hamill, yeah. He's done all sorts, Mark Hamill. He's a Joker in the Batman games and the Batman animations that were back in the day from when we were kids. He's done loads of voiceover. He's well, well known in that sort of area and field. Let's have a look, because to be honest, I'm not clued up on these people's names. We've got Michael Rosenborn. Heard, I've heard that name before. Yeah, so he was in Bollocks. the neighbor. I don't know. Guardians of the Galaxy oh, Volume so Two. Oh really? Yeah, he played Martinex. Yeah, I don't know who that is. I have seen guys. a lot of voices. It's that guy. Uh, Jackie Chan Adventures. Remember that little cartoon series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's part of that. Eliza Dushku? Yeah. Well, Yanni X, Super Tiger Watch from Bed. We'll catch you next time for sure. We'll have more free time now. Yeah. I mean, James and I stream sort of probably every six weeks on average. Mm. Um, Z Zaturio streams every week for the dojo. Uh, sort, of, uh, sort of 
either sort of around four o'clock UK time, or sometimes he'll go into sort of US time, so it'll be sort of overnight UK time. But he streams for us every Saturday, and we've it's his birthday today, actually, I believe. And we're, we're that's filling, why we're hosting we're, today. We're mm. filling in because we thought, you know, it's his birthday, he's allowed a break. We're nice like that. <laughs> Good night, by the way, Yannix. <laughs> uh, Michael, Michael Madsen. That I don't name. know if you, you know that name, but I recognise no. the face. He was in Kill Bill. Okay. Well, that's a yeah. bloody famous film. Well, he's a, he's, honestly, he's in loads of films. Jizu. You recognise his face probably more so than his name. Okay. It's, so it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? The amount of money they probably spent on that first Yakuza game. Like the dubs, the actors they got for it. And then they scrapped yeah. it for number two. It was all in Japanese with English subs. Yeah. Yeah, proper big actors. Not that Guy I. Guy is in an Indiana Jones films, Star Trek. Right, so it was a proper good cast. I know. I recognise the faces more than the names, to be honest. Peter Wilson. Playing you three at the moment, it's tough to go back after New Dragon. Yeah, I, yeah, it is, because obviously it's a much older game. Um, I found it a little bit jarring I mean it's probably I'm probably over egging the pudding a little bit when I say that but um, I see where you're coming from put it that way it's probably the best way I can say oh, Renners I've never played Yakuza I would heartily recommend the Yakuza games to anybody Anyone. Where would your recommend recommendation start from like zero or I would I would, six or... I would go from zero and go chronologically all the way through you can play judgment at any point through that if you want to but i would go zero to seven personally yeah yeah and quite often, i think i started with zero actually quite often they're cheap as well in like playstation sales and things like that so ah bugger Zanendes. Well, I haven't played the PS4 Yakuza's, but remember Yakuza 2 and 5's crazy sequences with tigers and bears. I think there's tigers in number 2, yeah? Yes, you fight a tiger. Kazumura. <laughs> I really liked Yakuza 3, actually, out of going through them. I enjoyed number 3, I liked, actually. Um, I liked the orphanage stuff. Um, mm. You know where he's, he's he's looking after all the all the kids and stuff. I remember being pissed right off when they said five wasn't coming to the west. I was mm. not well, it didn't that. come. It didn't actually ever release physically, did it? It had the. I think it's got like a box with. Okay, a box with the collector's edition, the 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 the, the remasters. An empty out, empty box, yeah. <laughs> which I thought was quite funny, actually. I I must confess, I thought that was a little bit a little bit cheeky. But it was free on PS Plus for a while, Yakuza 5 was. Yes, it was. Um, and I, I liked um, Kiru's story segment, and, and the taxi stuff was a lot of fun. Mm. You know, the, the taxi minigame. But to be honest, I, I didn't enjoy playing through as other characters. Um, you know, the, the prison guy, I forgot what his name is. The, the big bulky it? guy, yeah. I, I never really liked his, his his stuff. It was a bit that was a bit boring to me. The thingy. I liked um, I liked the new guy in four. Was it the like the business owner? Oh yeah, with this. Um, yeah, he, like he had real nice. He was um, fighting style based on kicks. I can't bloody remember his name. I'm, I'm probably I'm butchering Yakuza right here. Sounds horrendous. I, I, Akiyama or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's it. April. Hmm. That's the one. Yeah. yeah I liked him. I liked playing as. Um... Anyone play? I can't think of the, the 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 daughter's name. Not the daughter name. Like the the young girl. Haruka. Haruka. Yeah. I liked playing as her as it's like Yakuza Five, where she was like a, a Japanese Top idol. Idol. Yeah, that was quite good. Anyone play Taxi Chaos? Is it as shite as it looks? I have to confess, I haven't played it. 
So I don't know. I did see there was a few people looking forward to that game. I was watching Oregon oh, Pacifist oh, videos actually on that, and he seemed like he was really excited in his first video and, and sort of enjoyed it in his first video. And then I think the more he played, the more he realised it's you know it's not really it's not really on crazy taxi level. And in fact, there was a bit of a con controversy recently with that actually because um, I think originally they put out a tweet that said in Japan it was getting published by Sega or something. Yeah, that was it. And then it, it didn't actually end up happening. And I think Sega had to put out a bit of like damage control saying like we've got nothing to do with Taxi Chaos. And then yes, Taxi yes. Chaos put out a twi tweet saying that in Japan it's it wasn't Sega, it's going to be released by someone else. So I don't know if they just made that up. It, was a bit... it begs the question. Why? I mean, you've got, um, you've got Taxi Chaos. Which... I mean, it's never going to surpass Crazy Taxi. Or whatever you think of Taxi Chaos. Crazy Taxi is insane. Well, yeah, it's such a good game, so addictive. And the soundtrack, I can listen to that all day. All day. <laughs> and then you've got obviously um, got the, oh, what's the name of the Jet Set Radio inspired game that's coming out from Team Reptile. Bum Funk. That's it. It begs the question, like, why that's not being taken on by Sega, a bit like Sonic Mania was, in my opinion, and gone, we're making Bomb Rush Cyberpunk, thank you. And bomb, bomb Rush, yeah, that's it, yeah. And I, it I was, was going to say Bomb, bomb Funk MC, you know, <laughs> remember that. And it, um, I don't know why they haven't got, got that team in to go, well, do you know what, turn it to Jets at Radio. Bomb Funk MC Freestyler, that's what I was thinking of. I, I don't know. <laughs> remember that song? I do remember that song, Christ. Um, I don't know if Lemon's still in the chat, but it's, I mean, it's the other thing as well. Obviously, they're doing the Dragon and Phoenix project, which is, is bringing Shenmue 1 and 2 into Unreal, and it's... I don't know, it's interesting. It's, the whole thing's very interesting. I'm, I don't want to trod on say because actually they've been quite good to the dojo uh -huh. generally and they you know they've, and the helped, they've hosted our streams before they've given us codes to give away um they've been better are. better in recent years anyway yeah, yeah i don't think it's all doom and gloom i will i will say that i mean they gave shenmue a chance in 2018 whatever you think of the re-releases themselves they did it they funded that there's merchandise coming out they released a new merch line was it last year Mm. Well, it's it's easy to 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 pick on Sega really for like missing the opportunities with these games and stuff, but they are actually doing things themselves, and you know they're not really the same sort of company they used to be. And the studios are a lot smaller. You know, I think the original Shamu. We're talking a few hundred people, aren't we? Yeah. We worked on that. Panzer Dragon remake is going to have patches and full time remake was gone on, gone on a bit. Yeah, I like the Panzer Panzer Dragon um, remake actually. I thought it was a very good game. Loved it. Um, and they're, they're supposed to be uh, bringing out House of the Dead 1 and 2 as well, aren't they? Remakes they are, of them. yes. I don't know what's happened to that. I don't know how that's going to work. Because obviously they're like on games, aren't they? You'd... I don't know how they're going to. Remake a House of the Dead game without light gun features. It it have to be, it have to be in PSVR in my opinion. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be good. That would be amazing. Part of the reason I'm doing this bit is I want to play some QTE title. Yeah, I'm glad you've gone this route, you know, because the last few people I've watched do this section of the game, they've done like the knife roof, uh, route. Really? I, I, you, I always yeah. go this route. I, 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 I always go this way as well, but I, I watched Ryuji and he, he, he did the knife thing and I watched someone else a while back and they did the knife route as well. Uh, I didn't even know about that route to be honest until I saw someone do it. It's amazing though when you look at it, I mean this game came, in, came out in 2001, obviously you had the original Shenmue in 99. Yep. And you look, it's got branching paths, different routes to things. It's so ahead of its time, isn't it? It's crazy. But like, I think because I've always gone this route, this is what I just expect. I, I thought the game was. This was yeah. that part of the game that you, you have to do. And because 
it's so you know that cutscene with the kid there where you give him a toy and then you've got this room with the arcade machines i never questioned that there would be another route but like you say it's it's crazy that there is another route to finding you on and probably other people have always done that route <laughs> It's part of what they talk about in, in testing, actually, in the, in the interview that I did. That they, they were finding in testing all these branching routes. Yeah. And how do you legislate for that when you're testing? Especially if you don't know the game inside and out, like the team that made it. So say you, you spoke to that Mike Reinhardt guy who's the, you know, was the, the, the lead tester of the, the US company. Yeah. They've been handed a game to test. And obviously, the Japanese company have made it. And for a game like Shenmue, imagine, you know, we're, we're discovering stuff like we said at the, towards the start of the stream that we didn't know about for 20 years. <laughs> so, how, like you say, how do you, how do you test that stuff when you don't know it exists? It's crazy, isn't it, how much stuff is in these games? I mean, how long did it take us to find the Nozomi fight scene? Yep. Or um, the um, the dragon punch at the dock. The, the Goro, yeah, yeah, the Goro uppercut thing, and then the lucky hit board thing recently, which I know isn't really that was kind of cut content, but, but still, just it's, finding it's, that stuff, it's stuff is we didn't insane. know about. It's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? But Twenty years on, we are still finding new things about this blooming game. It's ridiculous. <laughs> It's crazy, but then it's part of what makes it so special, isn't it? Yeah. And I think people just casually playing the series, like they play through Shenmue 1 and you move on to Shenmue 2 and never touch the series again. They're, they're missing out on loads of stuff, really, aren't they? I know we've had like 18 years to fully invest in, into the games to find all you know, Duck Race's family's birthday. Without... <laughs> Imagine, I, I don't know who, who the first person was, I, I think they probably would have been told and it was in the, the guidebooks or whatever. But imagine having a, a quest line as, as, you know, thought out and crazy as Fangley's birthday and discovering that on your own without any documentation. You can't test that stuff, can you? How, how, how would a testing team know to wait till bloody 3rd of March and speak to certain NPCs and wait around and you know, have this cutscene with Fang Mei on her birthday or whatever, and then, you know, give themselves enough time to be able to go to a certain street and see you looking at a window or in a, a brooch or whatever. <laughs> crazy, isn't it? It's, it is crazy. It's like stuff they put in the game that we never expected anyone to find, to be honest. It's funny, actually, you mentioned the guidebook. I'm not going to spoil the interview, but we talk about the guidebook briefly in my interview with Mike. Yeah. Hey, Shamu, um, Shansom's in the chat now. Nice to see you. Son, how's it going? He must have finished work. Sorry, Mike, you were saying about the guidebook. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to spoil it, but we talk about the Prima guide for Shenmue 1 in my interview with Mike Reinhardt, actually. It's very, very, very interesting, some of Sort of the way it was put together. I'm not. I'm not going to spoil it. You, you have to listen to the interview. Hmm. And Mike is such Renaissance. a nice bloke as well. Such a nice bloke. He, he did come across that, you know, that James James Reiner interview. Yeah. Sounded, you know, so such a nice guy. And what he has said. To uh, I was going to say. Is um. I, He's I was going to say Renner's has took, took him four weeks to find the base. Sorry, Mike. It's... No, that's all right. No, no not at all. <laughs> um, Mike was saying that if there are any questions that come up from the interview, um, let, let us know at the dojo, um, and hmm. I can email, email them over, and he will answer them if he can. Specific, like, testing on... Did he do Shemmy 2 testing or just Shemmy no, 1 testing? He, no, no, no. I won't, again, I won't spoil it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> 13th of March, by the way, guys. Listen that interview. To the interview. Damn it. 13th of March, 9 a.m. UK time. Mm. So, I was saying, Brenners took me four months, uh, four weeks to find the basement for his play. Spike Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I 
if you say so, the last time you'd have seen me, I had my hair. Yeah, that's all gone that's now, true. mate. Uh, Lemon Haze, the lucky hit board stuff is especially interesting because the config is all text based. So you can easily customize most aspects of all the boards, yeah. That's really cool, actually. I, I, I did link it early on in the show, but I don't know if we've got new, new viewers in now. But uh, Phantom Redstone took um, kind of what Lemon Haze is talking about there, which is like this lucky hit board stuff that they've just found in the coding and whatever while they've been working on the Dragon Phoenix engine project thing. I've linked it there. That's a post that Switch has done on three cut lucky hit boards in the Thunder House and also this like bloody ginormous lucky hit board that I don't know if we're having fun with or it's an Easter egg or whatever. Um, that's pretty cool to see and obviously uh, like Lemon says <clears throat> they're all fully customizable it's like a text file that you're surprised like everything's running off this one text file and you can add um, pins wherever you want them to be just customize the boards pod them back into the game and you know, it'd be nice to get some sort of dojo logo lucky hit board eventually. Yeah. Oh, wow. mm, How do you do this? You get the toy. Oh, you, it gives you the toy, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, there's, there's, there's loads of stuff. There's loads of little things like that, isn't there? It's stupid. The game is stupid. <laughs> uh, Retro Godfather says, Amazing amount on offer within Shenmue 2. So much depth for a game this old. Yu Suzuki truly ahead of the game. Shenmue 2 especially, man. Yeah. The size of the the whole <laughs> experience is... It is mind-blowing, really. Even how they fit it on four discs doesn't make sense to me. They use sorcery. Compared to what all the Dreamcast games, you know. <laughs> sorcery. Ascension. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, I appreciate that, man. Because... Um... You look good, bald. <laughs> I've been thinking, been thinking of it, it nice, for a while, it? actually. To be fair, I mean, I just I got to the point where it's like, wow, I just want to get rid of it because I don't want to be that. We'll all we'll all get there eventually, won't we? It's one of these inevitable things where yeah. we're all going to lose all of our hair. I think it helps. <laughs> I I've got a beard, actually. I think I'd look. It wouldn't work if I didn't have a beard. I mean, I've been residing for years, man. Every time I get my hair cut, it, I'm sure it goes like a centimetre further. Do you know what? Like round the sides and the like, the back. It, my missus did it for me, luckily, and she like she said it was ridiculously thick. It took her three goes with clippers to get it all off. Right. <laughs> but on the top, where it's it started to go, it was like mm -hmm, done. <laughs> Horrendous. I don't know if it's uh, Harry L. I think I think it was Harry L that did a joke once where he was saying like as he got older it took him longer and longer to wash his face because <laughs> <laughs> his face goes all the way back here. You've got to laugh, haven't you? You, just, you, you sod it. It happens. I think it. I read mm. somewhere it happens to um, fifty percent of males actually, which is interesting. Yeah. But meh, whatever. Well, you just you just base base it off your dad, don't you? Like my my dad's, he looks like Homer Simpson, really, like his hairstyle. So uh, <laughs> I don't know how far off I am from that. It's funny because my dad has a full head of hair, like he's completely grey, full head of hair. My brother has a full head of hair. Yes, it is my mum's side because all my cousins on my mum's side, all the males, have lost their hair. Every single right, one it must be my dad's side then because my mum's still got all the hair. To be fair though, women don't seem to lose hair, do they? That... It's all down to testosterone, apparently. Well, some of it from okay. what I've read. What I mean by that is you don't see many bald women, do you? No. It'd be, it'd be your mum's brothers. Okay. Has your mum got a brother? My mum does have a brother and he has no hair. He hasn't had hair for a That's long time. Yeah, there you go then. You've got it from your mum's brother. That's his fault. Do you know it's just, it's a, a, a nice way of saying uncle. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, as a kid, I had like thick, thick black hair. And I look at it this way, it could have been worse because I could have. Mm. Um, 
I went to school with a lad who lost, started losing hair, his hair at 17. That's bad, isn't it? Yeah, but then it. again, it's weird when you think back to school, there was people with like moustaches and beards at like fucking 12. I know, you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there was guys that were like, they looked like they hadn't aged since we were like five. They were still like down to your, your waist. It's funny, isn't it? I ought to run mm. the last competition. S school, school is a weird like, you know, turning point for how you're going to be in your old, older years. Peter says, I'm 35 and can't grow a full beard. Just got a shit coatie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, some people are like that as well. They just get, like, weird patchy stuff, don't they? I mean, my, my facial hair is quite patchy, really. Um, but that that is also in part to, like, just picking at it. I can't help myself. It's, I, like, I start biting the moustache and pulling hairs out. Ah, there we go. Testosterone converts to oh son. Dihistosterone in your body. DHT binds to the receptors at the top of your head and thins the hair. Peter Wilson got full head of hair. Yeah, all right, show off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know Shay. Right. Hang on, let me just show that. Sorry. Ren is the chat has okay, gone so from Shemu all the way to losing hair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that's true. The, the, the wait for Shenmue's made us bullied. Why the hell? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick the next competition in. So, for anybody who missed the introduction, I'm giving away one of the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter tops. Oh, I'm getting my rights and left mixed up. There you go, that's the front of it. It's in medium, and you can see the back of it. So, pre-worn guys, pre-worn by Matt there. <laughs> Sweaty and horrible. <laughs> no, it's, it's, yeah. one, it's, in, it's in the cupboard. Uh, complete that one. Let me do the next one now. Again, it's open for 10 minutes and then I'll draw it. So it should be popping up in the chat any second now. I look younger. That's interesting. Raffle. Oh, when it works. Yeah, there you, you go, it's in the chat Imagine now. So, exclamation mark oh, yeah. raffle you're for you know. YouTube and Twitch. Get your entries in as soon as possible. You have 10 minutes. Always loved how you could lock onto any character in Shimmer 2 and follow them about or ask for directions to a location and be taken there by the character. Great feature. Uh, welcome, uh, Worry game, I haven't, or worry guy, I haven't seen you in chat before, so welcome. Guy man, after a welcome. Not a see you, oh, see you on the forums all the time. I saw him in the, yeah, in the Corey stream. Yeah, welcome, nice to see you. Ah! Sorry, the game's not working, just because. I've just been... in time for the raffle, guys. Yeah. Exclamation mark raffle. Good timing, good timing. It's when a Kickstarter backer exclusive t shirt that Spud's. It's model in there size medium um, we're good um guy man uh, i'm all right yeah just having a nice quiet well i say quiet evening yeah. nice evening streaming show me too how you doing going quite well actually isn't it it's like yeah. Uh, yeah we've been going two, two, and, and, half a two and a half hours i was gonna say it's like a two hour stream <laughs> we always go over there don't we yeah. do you know yeah. what why not it's, you're enjoying ourselves i am enjoying myself man why? it's the first time i've had whiskey for a while actually why the hell are they? Why the hell I'll probably get battered by the missus later for going over, but never mind. <laughs> I think I've got more and more like jovial throughout the stream. I have to confess, I've been drinking, I've been drinking vodka through the stream. We don't condole, condone drinking alcohol, guys, by the way. Don't drink and stream, guys. And no, just unless, unless, well, unless you are streaming Shamu for, for two hours every sixth week, I think you're you're entitled to drink something. Ray nephews, oh, 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 that's brave, son. Oh, what's he mean, Ray? Ray nephews. What's little, Ray? Ray nephews is like a type of drink. It's quite, oh, oh, it's not particularly. Never pleasant. heard of it. I have. It's not particularly pleasant. The what kind of drinks that? Like, 
Are they used to? I don't know if they used to be like flavoured stuff. I might be talking wrong. To be honest, I've already drunk it and passed out. But... What, like WKD? No, it's like shot stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. Jamaican run. Run. I'm, I can slow with my words, man. <laughs> I'm good too, it's the weekend, I've seen some more face, yeah. should we, I'm alright, obviously. Yeah, yeah, why yeah, not? It's man. a nice, nice yeah. Saturday. Especially this section of the game, this is a... Actually, I don't, I, I'm not too fond of the following you on stuff. It's quite tedious, isn't it? But it is a good part of the game to watch, I, am, I must admit. Rio's creeping. It's annoying to play because of like not being able to like run. You've got to kind of like just dodge forward a little bit, aren't you? Keep yeah. nudging forward. Lots, yeah, do you know what actually? Um, I've seen lots of people streaming Shenmue recently. Which is great to see because the more people see the game, the better, in my opinion. I'd say we're jumping on the bandwagon, but I think uh, <laughs> being the Shemu Dojo, I don't, I don't think we can uh, actually say that we're jumping on the bandwagon. Anyone that hasn't entered this competition, we were running a competition for a Kickstarter back a T-shirt that Spud's wearing. Not the, not the one Spud's wearing, but that shirt. Medium. Just type exclamation mark raffle. You have five minutes as well. Left. Five minutes remaining. Okay. How many viewers have we got? Then we've got ten on YouTube and we've got thirty on Twitch. So there's a good, good crowd. How have you seen that on Twitch? I have got How's it. Through, it it's through Streamlabs. Okay. So we've got. Really I think because I'm logged in on the Shamu Dojo, I can't actually see how many. We've got a really, really good crowd in tonight. I'm really, yeah, thank you everybody for taking the time to just you know, watch us talk about Shenmue. Just have a nice chilled out evening or morning, after, depends where you are, of course. <laughs> Peter Wilson's doing some sh some shady business deals in the chat here. <laughs> <laughs> what, what size shirt? So uh, it's medium, medium, right? Yeah. Medium. Yeah. So either gain or lose some weight, guys, for this medium T-shirt. I think this is a medium. I think. I can't, I'd have to look. I can't remember. Is the soundtrack for Shemu 2 taken from the Japanese Dreamcast version? Yuan sounds different to the power one. Ah, that's because the Dreamcast they... Version, Yuan sounds different to the power one. Oh, bollocks. Sorry, I can't hear the music. It's, um... Yeah, Yuan's voice is from the Dreamcast <sighs> Japanese <sighs> version. I don't know why they did it in the re-releases, but actually Yuan in the Japanese version is a is a man who's a bit of a, a transvestite. So it's a little hmm. bit controversial. So they censored it for the EU release. Yeah. They probably would do these days, would they? I bet they would no. probably go for the transverse site in 20... Well, having said that, obviously they did do for the re-release, but, but I... if this was a a game coming from Japan now, I bet they probably would, wouldn't would really no. think to, to censor it like this. Oh, Paddy's ah, dropped in. Nico. He's, oh, he's in the raffle. Lurking. You've already got the shirt, there. haven't you, Paddy? You're not thinking of eBay in a shirt here, are you, Paddy? <laughs> you wouldn't do that, would you, man? Strictly say you're at medium. The Corona kilos say no. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Corona kilos. That's quite funny. I like that. What are that? Well played. Well played. It's, fu it's oh, fun. Yeah, it's funny. Got... People uh, like Ren is. I will have to go on a diet. I miss it's nice that they can, like trust. I miss the gym terribly. I will say that. I've been running to keep fit. I run three five k's a week at the moment, and it's, I don't know. I prefer the gym. Hmm. You never really hear about like men trying to fit into certain sizes of clothing do you like you hear women say like they want to go from a dress size 16 to 14 or 12 or something but mm. you never really hear a man saying like 
you know, I'm going to hit the gym to get in a medium Shamu shirt. <laughs> We've got two minutes left on the competition, guys. Exclamation raffle to enter. Just for the guys on YouTube, you are in the competition. Boy, um, but for whatever reason, Streamlabs uh, doesn't trigger trigger it, but you are in. I've checked it. Shenson, USC tonight, AEW tomorrow. Yes, I am looking forward to Revolution, actually. That's going to be epic. I'm going to have to watch it on Monday, though, because I've got work. I couldn't, I couldn't stay up until, like, 3, 4 in the morning and then work. I think I'd be a waste of time if I did that. When, when's that, then? Is that Sunday? Sunday, yeah, early like hours. Like, the early hours of yeah, Monday morning. Yeah, yeah, it is. Early hours. I watch, yeah, I do, I guy I, man. I watch, I watch AEW. Um, I try and catch I, up. I don't it weekly. Best, um, but it's good actually. It's good. Sometimes yeah. inconsistent. What's it stand for? AEW. All Elite, All Elite Wrestling. Wrestling. Okay. Okay. Do they still make wrestling so, video games? <laughs> You got the WWE 2K series, which the last one was terrible. Um, they're making an AEW game actually as well. Uh, it's is, that the, is that the one that was like was really trashed on the Switch or something? Because it was like awful. The new the WWE 2K, the last one was. Mm. I will say this, Renners, for WWE, SmackDown is really good at the moment. I really like SmackDown, actually. Talking about wrestling. <laughs> Renners says I have to live in the gym to get medium, to get into a medium. The last time I sort of lived in the gym for clothes was my wedding. I'm going to call it now. Renners is going to win this t-shirt. You reckon? This is going to be the incentive for... I'll have a look in a minute and see how many we've got. I will draw it. I think we, what, what I'll do is I'll get to the end of this section. I'm not doing the planks tonight. I think I... There you go, it's just closed. I'll get to the end of this section. I'll draw the winner and I think I'll bring us to a close at that point because that'll be about three hours. Yep. What to finish about 11-ish. Yeah. It's fine with me. Renners are getting fed up from WWE. <laughs> Raw. Yeah, I'd agree. Smackdown's a lot better. NXT's excellent. Yes, I love NXT. And AEW's brilliant as well, to be fair. I struggle to keep up with the content actually as well because you've got so much wrestling to watch these days. It's like, how do you keep up with it all? So I tend to sit on YouTube or just fast forward through a load of stuff or watch it on like two times speed, which is interesting in itself actually. I do a lot of stuff on two times speed these days, you know. Podcasts. Podcasts, 100%. I mean, I don't think, without two times speed, I don't think I'd be able to get through all the podcasts. And that is like, you know, I, I work from, I probably listen from like 9am till 2pm every day. And from the stuff that I listen to, I, I don't think I'd be able to get through all the podcasts if they weren't on two times speed. And I do watch YouTube stuff on two times speed, to be honest. And it's, it's crazy, but the podcasts we've made together as well, I've listened on two times speed just to make sure that <laughs> you can listen to them on two times speed, if that makes sense. So they've passed the test anyway. What we've made, you can listen to on two times speed. And it's The only thing I would say... The only thing I would say is when I was reading that, um, you know, the limited run games interview thing I, I read out from the last podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit too fast, perhaps, on two times speed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people are like, familiar with like my accent. And, yeah. Oh, that's quite funny. Please, go, my head a little bit. Never mind. 
Oh, Guy Man says he never watches or listens to Sound Speed anything because he doesn't un understand it. We're all having a good time tonight. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. I think I've, I've attuned to the two times speed now. Maybe, maybe I thought that at the start, but I think once you, you know, you, you really get into the two times speed. When, when we did that Radio Sega podcast, I mean, as soon as I heard KC's voice, it just sounded so slow and. <laughs> I'm so used to hearing what he sounded like on two times speed that anything other than two times speed is it just sounded drunk, slow, and drunk. When you said that to him on the podcast, actually, I'm sure you said that to him. I'm sure you said that to him. Yeah, he said he sounds drunk. He sounded. He, he found it quite funny. To be fair. Used to what it sounds like. Yeah. Casey's and the thing is, though, though, I like Casey's. Brilliant. Like the, the 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 theme tunes to like podcasts, like the Radio Sega theme tune, and like the the little pieces of music he plays. Sorry, the Sega Lounge, and like I'm trying to think of other podcasts I've heard where the music in my head is two times speed. So when I I listen to it one time speed, it just sounds so weird. Like I think if if. Mm, like, I, I understand what people are saying, like, you can't get used to two times speed, but I think if you start with something on two times speed and just. If you just get used to that speed, as soon as you go back to anything slower, it just sounds stupid. I'll have to try it next time I do a podcast when I'm working. Yeah. And the good thing is, you know, like, our, our podcasts are like two and a half hours. Yeah. You get through them in an hour and a quarter, you know, it's nothing. Guy Man, uh, not an English man who speaks very too hard for me. Where are you from, Guy Man, if you don't mind my asking what country are you in? And then Shenson, do you guys think Ryo will be in the new Virtua Fighter? Surely he has to be. I'd love him to be in the new Virtua Fighter. Oh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? That would be. A it depends Can you what they're, they're actually going to do with the, the Virtua Fighter. You know, is it going to be a brand new game or what? We don't even know what it is, do we? Can you imagine if Sega put Rio in Virtua Fighter? Because they'd have to do a new model mm. for him as well. So they'd have to design a model or nick the one that WiseNet did. Mm. And imagine if they. It's weird though when you think, going back to like the Geneva, Sonic I Racing think. Transformed, well even even the Sonic, the Sonic Racing, you know, the original Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing Rio model, and the, the Transformed the version as well. What was the reaction for those when when you saw those models? Like, I don't think if you saw Rio in Virtua Fire, that is like a real mm. shock sort of reaction, isn't it? But I don't think we had that kind of reaction with the the racing games as such. The, it was the passport model in the racing uh, the Sega racing games as well, wasn't it? Pretty sure it's the passport model they used. It was cool. Yeah. yeah, it looked really good. Looked really, really. I like good. the I like I like the transformed. How you did the different arcade machine yeah. transformations. That was and, really cool. And the number plate, the Shen Three number plate. That's Bastards quite, are. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> it was clever. I liked it. I did like I'm it. To be fair, so very it's well played. Uh, Retro Godfather says one thing I never managed to do is take all the needed photos to unlock all of the comic pages in Shenmue Two. Okay. We seem to miss three or four. Another reason to replay Shimmy 2. It's quite fun actually taking photos of characters. You, you, you can see there. who you need to take. So if you're familiar with Shimmy 2, you, you, you can, if you look into the secrets folder of the. You can probably do now, but actually, if you go into the secrets folder of the photos, you can actually through. see um, who you need but to yeah, take you photos can of. See them here. Sorry, it's a bit quick. It's just I don't want to lose a. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, yeah. So guy so, man, guy man's in Switzerland. Oh, yeah, nice. Bit. Sorry, James. So if you, I was just saying, if you're familiar with the characters by this point, <sighs> you don't have to miss them. I mean, it's. We'll get to the end of this section. We'll watch the cutscenes. I'll draw the competition, then I will close us for the evening. I have to say, I've had an absolute ball of a time tonight. Loved it. 
ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。
what we're talking like six, seven, or eight months later, we've got a, a magazine published. We've got all this interaction with various Shemu legends. You especially, man, with all your interviews, talking to Cedric and and Ryan, and you know we're kind of like part of the the Shemu family already, really. It's, yeah, it's I don't know, it's taken on a life of its own a little bit, actually, and then. I don't, I'm really enjoying it. I'm starting to ask answer some questions in the chat, actually. I'm really enjoying it as well. So, it is a whirlwind, though. Is it, what I was trying to say. It's it's God, been a whirlwind since really, we. It's really busy, um, and I will say, I think James will probably back me up on this. Both our wives are probably very tolerant people. <laughs> yeah. For, for, aren't they? I think we've got life partners there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we do. To be fair, they're, they're my my wife's brilliant. I'm sure your wife's the same. To be fair. Um, that's that's a nice comment from Guy. Guy man. I love the community in the interview podcasts and general content you make and Shemu World of course. And he's pretty he he's pretty new to the dojo as well, yeah. but likes how it's and that's exactly what we want with the dojo. It's good quality content, it's a friendly environment. Discuss what you want and do it respectfully. Yeah, I mean we're all for it. I do understand forum aspect is quite dated in twenty twenty one. But I do appreciate people still taking the time to go on to, you know, a, a forum, creating a topic, leaving a post, because that is the bread and butter of the dojo, really, at the end of the day. That is where, you know, the dojo's name has come from. It's it's the forums mm. that have kept the series alive for the dojo uh, for all these years. You know, there's only really the social media aspect of things that have come into play since probably, probably since Shenmue 3, since 2015. I know we had the um, the Team U and the 500k push for the Shenmue 3, you know, let's get Shenmue 3 or whatever it used to be called, save Shenmue 3, Give you, um, uh, and then save Shenmue 8, of course. But I, I would say probably the last five or six years has like been the main social media, th is, is what, like where that's kind of, I don't want to say overtaken forums as such, because I feel like the forum's still a major mm. part of especially the dojo as a brand. Um, but I feel like the social media aspects is like kind of, we've, we've had to adapt as well to the, to those sort of platforms. We have. And I think it's people are finding us from those places as well. Yeah, they still are to be fair. And just going through Shenson saying, oh, the dojo's hype when there's a new announcement. Yeah. The forums burst into life when there's announcements. I mean, Take I'll take Lemons Project as, as as the most recent example. The moment that anything that got announced, the forums were heaving, mm. absolutely heaving. Yeah. I mean, and I'll take another one with Monaco 2019. When that trailer came out, it was so busy the forums crashed. <laughs> so, oh, you think? It's crazy, isn't it? What's it say? So that that. See, we've had more members since because if you look at the forums, at the just the. The statistics at the bottom, it says uh, most ever online statistics, members, 94 on the 10th of June 2019. So that, that was after Monaco, right? Yeah, it's just uh, yeah, it's not after Monaco. It's probably around E3, actually. We've had 859 guests on the 12th of August 2020. I'm thinking, not quite sure what happened that day. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm just going through the chat. I see uh, Novin works. Ali Novin's popped in to say hello. Welcome. Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm on. How's it going? Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. And uh, just so everybody's aware, Ali is um, a Shenmue ambassador. So he links with WiseNet over in Japan. Um, keep an eye out for his tweets now and again. Nice to see you. Um, I'll get him a t uh, link, actually. I'm going to... Yeah, he is like the um, the ambassador for gonna, the Shamu series. I'm going to catch up on some chat quickly before I draw the competition out. I think I've got them all. I actually. don't see. Renner says I don't go on the Shamu forum. I sure I joined years ago. The thing is, like you'll you'll get people like that that just stop in and you know just come back and the same with Huber. I think. Mm. I think you asked him if he's been a, a part of the, the community or the, the forums or whatever. And, you know, you get people like that that have been in the past but don't actively follow them. 
Appreciate yeah, that, says, Alex. Just stop by to say hi and join your conversation, folks. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ali. Thanks, nice. man. It's good to see you pop in. Nice to see everybody, actually, tonight. I've been lurking. <laughs> oh, he's heard everything then. We're getting, that's it. We're getting sued in the morning. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it is a, it's a good place to hang out. I agree with Son. I mean, you don't have to be on there constantly daily. I know going back 10 or 15 years, I mean, I'm trying to think when I first joined the dojo, it was like literally my life. I was playing Dreamcast games and always on the dojo at the same time. Shemu dojo, Shemu dojo. Day in, day out, I was like really invested in the dojo for years. And that's good. It's a good thing as well, especially back in the day. Loads of uh, amazing conversations and stuff I had with like loads of different members and stuff. But these days, I think there's so many different platforms to like share your opinion on the series and whatever. I just think just you know popping into the dojo every now and again. It's it's a great place to to leave your um, what's the word like? You, you leave your message and it stays there forever. You know, it's like if you if you push out a tweet. By the end of the day, it's gone. Mm. You know, to to find a tweet again is it's really difficult to be honest. But on the dojo, if you post or leave a topic or something, it's there. You know, it's there for years. You know, you people people will come and find your topic in a couple of years' time and bump it, and just an opinion or, or you know just something you left there. You know, a few months ago, a few years ago, it's always a topic of discussion, which I quite like. That is that is a good thing about forums. Yeah, and we've we've preserved our old forums from the .NET days as well, so it's all still there. So you can you can view your old posts. I mean, Lemon just summed it up quite well. Um, the dojo extended the experience of the Shenmue games, even though you didn't register for a while. But still remembers going there and reading the theories, etc. And I think that's exactly it. It's an extension mm. of the community. And people have been there, like like Lemon says, just lurking, or Ali just lurking. People have just lurked for years and years and years, and only just made an account recently, or only just made an account, you know, five years ago, and they've been lurking for ten years prior to that. The dojo's, it's been going for twenty years now, over twenty years, well over twenty years, and you know, people that have been lurking, just following the conversation and stuff. It's, it is crazy hearing that sort of stuff that, you know, someone like Lemon Hayes, who's a massive part of what the dojo's doing at the moment and, you know, his project and the team that he's built to create such an exciting prospect in the future. He's just been a lurker for all those years and, you know, he's only really got into, into the dojo as a whole. It's... Dojo's got many That's been a great platform if you think movie. back it does. all those years. Yeah, Dojo has many lurkers, <laughs> definitely. I'm looking at some of the comments in chat as well. Um, well, the, the thing is, man, you've got to think, when Shemi 1 and 2 were released, you had people from D3T lurking yeah. in the, on the Dojo. You know, these people that are familiar with the Dojo, like Ryan, Peyton, I'm sure. Yeah. Even if he never posted, and these people, like people who, who work for IGN and that sort of stuff, they, they check into the dojo to see the ongoing progress of stuff. And like, I'm sure these people from IGN and these different fan sites, like Games GameSpot or whatever, that are checking in on Lemonade's project. Yeah, they'll come to the dojo. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Exactly. It's, well, this mm. is a good one. This is a, oh, you. Um, we're just going through the chat. And it's a thing, it's, it's the same again, sorry, just before you, 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 you go on there, Matt. Just with the, the Shemu World Magazine, man, seeing people backing the project, like the Kickstarter names, some of the people that were backing it, you know, obviously they've been lurkers or part of the dojo since they were kids themselves, and now they've got professions in the gaming industry. And just seeing so many recognisable names that are backed for the, the magazine that the dojo put out there, the Shemu World magazine, that was mind-blowing to me, to see familiar names that I look up to nowadays, you know what I mean? That when they were 15, you know, the same age that we are kind of thing, they were using the forums for, like, expressing their own opinions on Shemu and talking about the, the story and the, the, that sort of shit. 
crazy. I mean, it's a, it's a mainstay, isn't it? The dojo. And obviously that's what we want to be going down, down the road. I'm just going through the chat. Um, Daniel Man just popped in. Say hello. Nice to see you. Um, you're probably no, dude. catching us at the end of things, to be fair, but... Can going? you still win the chariot, or is that gone? It's gone. It's gone. I've got to call that, actually. Um, Chow asked, actually, um, how long, how much do we time do we spend doing content? That's a good question. I mean, for me, I'll answer first. I will, because I'm working from home at the moment, I can spend, I can jump on my lunch breaks and do some editing if I'm doing a podcast. Um, I normally have about a day or two in the week that I'll pick things up and the odd time on the weekend. So it's almost, and James, I'm sure you'll back me up on it, it's almost like having a full time job in itself. In some respect, it is. Isn't it? Honestly, it is because even though, I mean, you could, you could probably, some, like, even myself, before we took over the dojo, just from a distance looking at, you know, what the dojo does, the dojo is a reliable place where if some news breaks, someone's there to kind of break the news with them. So, like, say if, if Shemu 4 gets announced, you would expect the dojo to announce it within seconds, if not minutes, do you know what I mean? You know, minutes at most. So, there's, there's people that are involved in the dojo that are on the ball, you know, we're constantly active. Um, throughout the day, even while I'm working, I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm retweeting stuff or posting stuff on Twitter. I know you take over the Facebook and mm -hmm. we've got a few people that cover Instagram as well, sort of thing. But there's, there's like a collective effort there to, to make sure that the, the dojo's consistently pushing out content, be it Twitter, Facebook, the forums, Instagram. You've got to think, it's, it's not easy really to post something through so many different platforms. It, it does take, even if it's five or ten minutes, it's something out of a person's day that's eaten out of their time or they've had to actively think to do something at that certain time. And post something brand new, content-wise. Uh, your interview, you've, you've taken, you've taken like say two hours to speak to a person, and then you've edited that podcast down to just be like the the stuff that you want people to hear. Uh, so maybe you've taken like a three-hour conversation with someone to two hours, and just editing that one-hour podcast could, could take six hours, and. Um, there's just, there's just a lot of stuff behind the scenes that you probably don't think about that happens, basically. Yeah, absolutely. And it's... Basically. It's hard to keep track of that, actually. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have a, an actual total. No, I, I, but like, I, like you yeah. said, Matt, it's like a full-time job, isn't it? I couldn't totally. Or well, a part-time job, at least. I couldn't totally. And I think we're lucky to have understanding like families as well that are like, yeah, because it's a passion project at the end of the day. We all do it for free. We all do it because we love it. Mm-hmm. So it's, we're lucky that our, and to be honest, our we probably do too much. <laughs> you know, like, while I was doing the magazine, I'd only just had a, a newborn child. And then Ooh. I've got super pass going on at the same sort of time, if anyone's interested in, you know, the, the Shemu Passport application there. I was working with the Switch and Shemu Forever. forever. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different projects and stuff that we're all involved in. So it, it's not really just the dojo as a, as a full stop thing. It's, it's all these other little things that we're keeping ticking over. And you've got to think from that sort of mentality as well. The amount of messages and the amount of replies and stuff that you've got to... You feel like you've always got to be on the, the ball and replying to people and... Um, you know, keeping that profesh professionalism at the end of the day while has we've, we've, we've obviously me and Matt have both got full time jobs and everyone else that is involved in the in the dojo staff we've all got full time jobs at the end of the day. I'm just going to go through the um, chat again. Some people popped up. Sam uh, Weed has popped up. Um, yeah, nice to see you, Sam. Obviously, for those who don't know, Sam runs a new Shenmue fan group, um, which is Shenmue AU. They're Australia based. So check them out on Twitter, mm -hmm. well worth doing. And it's nice to have another Shenmue group in the community at the end of the day. I mean, someone asks, is there rivalry between the community groups? No, we drive each other on. We all, we all work together, we all talk to each other. 
And it's one... there's actually like a, an overarching staff sort of chat as well. Yeah, ah. there is. We're uh, all where like all the all the communities involved. So that's that's really nice. Um, in a sense that we're all working together for this this one goal. Um, I can't, let me just link that actually. So this is Sam Weaver's group, the uh, Australian group. Fantastic. Um, Guy Man's just saying it's really rare to talk about Shenmue. I have no one directed my entourage to talk about Shenmue, so I go to the internet to talk about it. That's a dojo. It's full of hate. hate so yeah, the dojo. It does. I mean, what, what I will say with dojo is we, we invite conversations anyway, from any side of an argument. The only thing we do say is it's done respectfully. That's it. Yep. As long as you can have a discussion respectfully and don't get outraged, don't get upset, the small, you know, then it's it's then you know we're <laughs> more than happy for that to happen. Um, Renner's sixty nine. Can I get involved more? Um, I would suggest dropping us a a. Um, a direct message on Twitter is probably the easiest way to get hold of us, and mm -hmm. we can talk about that separately from here. That's fine. Um, going through some more. The Shemu in itself is probably a passion project. We'll use Zeus. It's only right a lot of this comes from that. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, Ali, Ali says public will never know everything behind the scenes, either no. due to confident confidentiality or simply not necessary. That's good. Cool. I think. It, once you're involved with this sort of stuff here, you know, you, you kind of realise how much passion and stuff goes into stuff. Shansun says, the Shemu World magazine is an average Metacritic score. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. Right, I'm going to do nice. one more go of the, um, the lucky hit for this bloody scroll. I'm going to draw the competition and then I will draw it to a close because... I'm gonna get. I think to be like Lemon Hay says there, to be a you know, to be a Shemu fan, you've got to have a lot of passion to the series, and yeah. I think you know a lot of that passion if you can direct it at you know other projects and stuff like what we're doing, it's it's good stuff. I mean, it's only it's only keeping the Shemu name alive, really. Yeah, what everyone does to to keep things going, taking right. over. And I will say this for the other community groups that are out there. You've obviously got Shenmue AU, which I've talked about. You've got Shenmue Japan now. You've got Phantom Riverstone. You've got Shenmue Forever, who's pumping out content on Twitter. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> One man mm -hmm. on his own. You've got Shenmue Master. You've got Shenmue DE. You've got uh, the Shenmue 500K. And I'm probably missing... You've got Shenmue Photos. You've got so many groups out there now. Um, just as well, we just had a follow again. NFG, NIC. Nice to, nice to see you. And... Thank you for the follow. Well, there's so many groups out there now. It's all working for the same goal. That is to get Shenmue 4 at the end of the day and keep keep the profile of, of, of the series alive. And we've got an anime coming, so we'll be promoting that like hell when that comes out. I can assure you. Um, and we, James and I have been talking about things around that when it comes out, but we'll keep, keep it between ourselves now. Right. This is the last one. And I'm going to draw the T-shirt and then... I'm going to let everybody disappear for the evening. Well, I can already tell this has gone wrong. I could do with a little wee wee, go so... On, go on, go on, go on! Would... Oh, you bastard! Oh, mate, that would have been it. That would have been a nice way to end the stream. <laughs> you didn't know we were on Twitch? Oh, well... We are. Um, James and I stream every six weeks. Um, we have a regular... Regular streamer Zatorio streams every Saturday for us, so do drop in on his streams every every weekend. Right, let me draw this competition. I will save this as well, actually, because yeah, yeah, I, will... I think next time we stream, I'll pick up from here actually and do the bloody that's planks. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. You're at a nice point of the game as well. Yeah. Really. Right. So let's draw this competition. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. You're welcome, Sam. Nice to see you drop in, man. Peter Wilson on YouTube, you have won the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter t shirt in medium. Um, Peter Wilson. So, he's the guy that was <laughs> taking up two entries. Ah, well, he's won one. Um, so, drop, smart. drop us a well tweet. Um, direct tweet. And we will um, sort you out. 
Guy Man, uh, maybe she posts a weekly monthly calendar for streams or income and content on the homepage. We do post on the on the homepage. I try to do it when it launches, um, just because I it's, I find it easier for sort of managing my own time, etc. But in terms of streams, if people are interested that when we me and James are going to stream, maybe we can publicise that a bit 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 further ahead of time because we normally find out yeah. a week or two before we do it. So I'm more than happy to publicise that ahead of time. So that's fine. We usually do do like a, a giveaway as well. So yeah. that's like a telltale I, sign that, yeah, you know, it's, you it's, tell it's one us. of our streams. Because it's nice to do things like that. And every, it's just worth a bit of, bit of fun at the end of the day. Um, right. Yep. I'm going to bring us to a close for this evening for everybody who's joined us. Thank you so much. We've had a fantastic time. That's been ace. That has. It's been like really a real good, good three hour stream. I've really enjoyed that it's, myself. It's flown by as well. Thank you yep. to everybody that's joined us. I'm now probably going to go to bed <laughs> um, and catch our weekly streams with Zacturio as well. And we will see yep. you in a few weeks, I'm absolutely sure. So Brilliant. thank you, everybody. Have a good night, good day, or whatever you're doing for the rest of the weekend. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Good night, everyone. All good? Okay, man. I'm just going to go for a wee because I'm busting. Back in a second, Make a little kiss